Here come the Gophers for a homecoming crowd anticipated to be somewhere around 45,000 in the Metrodome. Coach John Goodikens and his team looking to make it a happy homecoming. There's a golden gopher for you. Northwestern won the toss. They will receive. Pat New, number 25, will be deep for the Wildcats. And kicking off for Minnesota, number 40, Jeff Geyer. And there is Francis Pay. He's had a long season so far. And he is hoping it becomes considerably shorter tonight. Behind him, Bill McConnell, the defensive coordinator. And he has had an even longer season. And there is John Gutekunst. In his third season, Geyer puts his left foot into it. And we are off. New at the eight. 20. Pat New about the 30-yard line. Brought down by Les O'Hara. And we'll take a look at the Northwestern offensive backfield. You can see it is the same as it's been just about all year. Bradshaw, the senior quarterback. Byron Sanders, Rushalt are the running backs. And McClellan and Buchanan, the Whiteouts. Change at left tackle. Brett Dirks in there. Mike Bounds going to play defense tonight. And the rest of them have started considerably, uh, started a lot this year. And there's Byron Sanders on the first carry. Gets a couple of yards. He is stopped in there by Ross Uckelberg, number 90, a senior, 6'5 senior. And there's the Minnesota defensive line. Ockrey, Trent Tripp, Uckelberg, and Anthony Bryant. Gets stats and Max Stevens stats in there for John Leverance, the uh, All-American candidate who was hurt in the first game. King, Thaddeus, Brown, and O'Hara, a very susceptible secondary. Let's see if Northwestern can exploit it. They are in the wishbone, and this is Bradshaw. And Greg Bradshaw turning the corner, getting up close to first down yardage. Brought down by the linebacker on the left side, Ron Getz, and it'll be about third and two. Take a look at Bradshaw. He's got good statistics, but again, the statistics aren't the whole story. No, and one of the things that uh, they've done now two games in a row, Mike, they've come out against Indiana and here tonight running that wishbone, trying to make some things happen on offense, only an average of 111 yards on the ground. you got to make uh, some changes. Well, they saw what it could do to them by Army and Air Force, and now they're trying to see what they can do to it against Minnesota. Third down, play along two. Sanders up close to first down country. Trent Tripp bringing him down. It'll be a uh, very close call here. And they'll take a look, bring out the chains, and measure it out. Mike, I don't know if you noticed, but as the point just before the uh, coin flip uh, took place, when both teams came out, Minnesota had brought out half their team, and we're trying to figure out why up here in the booth. But one of the things I noticed about the Wildcats is that the five guys that did came out, they're holding hands, and I think that I'm sure that had a lot to do with their 0-4 record. They've got really nothing to lose and everything to gain. So obviously this team is trying to regroup and get at least one, one win on the board. It's a first down, the first first down of the ball game for Northwestern. And we are about a minute and a half into the first quarter. Byron Sanders getting the ball here as Northwestern working the ground early on the wishbone. Sanders across midfield into Gopher territory inside the 45, Ted. Oh, nice block by the right side of that offensive line from the end zone. You'll see there on the right side of your screen, number uh, 76, Daryl Best gets a turn in block. And you remember on the wish, but all you need is to turn in your man and screen him, and you can you can hit it like they did right here. Best from American Fork, Utah. First and 10 for the Wildcats from the 44 of Minnesota. This is Bob Christian going left. Christian, after a gain of maybe a yard, gets bounced out of there by Max Stevens, the fine junior linebacker from Akron, Ohio. I tell you, Mac, uh, Bob Christian, there you see him uh, having a uh, not-so-good year, but uh, this offense is struggling on the ground. Let's talk a little bit about Max Stevens. I really like this young uh, team leader in tackles, averaging 10 a game, and uh, let's see if they can hold him here, Mike. Buchanan, uh, Richard Buchanan, split wide to the right, call it second and eight now. Chasing Bradshaw. Bradshaw has his man, but it's incomplete. Intended for Bobby Griswold, the tight end. Defending on the play was Ron Getz, and there was a lot of daylight. Certainly a, uh, a wide-open receiver and the catchable ball, or maybe just threw it too low for him. 
Uckelberger number, uh, I'm sorry, Uckelberg number 90 broke in right over Calatine rather quickly on that right side, putting some pressure. But again, they have Chris, uh, uh, the tight end open downfield. So we'll see what happens here. Third down eight. From the 43, Randy McClellan in there along with Richard Buchanan on the wideout. Great drop. Intercepted by Minnesota. And Joel Stats, the middle linebacker, in there on the pickoff at the Gophers 35. Make it the 37. I think one of the reasons why that happened is uh, you'll see a blitz by number four, 94, Mac Stevens, right there. Not a, not a factor as I look in the monitor, but uh, just threw the ball right into pressure and a good interception by number 55, Joel Stats. Well, Minnesota will take over now with quarterback Scott Schaffner, the freshman, starting his first game of the season. Darrell Thompson, the all-everything back. Dual Bruce and Gators filling things out. The backs and the wide receivers. Quarterback on the keeper, Scott Schaffner gets up around the 40-yard line, dragged down by Mike Vickery in there at one of the linebacker spots. And here is the Minnesota offensive line. Dravzik, Thome, Brian Williams, a 300-pounder. J.J. Lennon, Limita, and Otto, the tight end. We've got Paul Hopewell in there now. It's a big offensive the wide line. Receivers. I'm sorry, Mike, big offensive line here for Minnesota, too. Second down. Long seven. And here's the first carry of the game for Darrell Thompson. And Thompson turning the corner. Sutter along with Terry Thomas. Good block by J.J. Lennon leading the way, and you can see some of the skill that Darrell Thompson has right away. Well, Darrell Thompson can do a lot. He did a lot last year. Well over 1,200 yards rushing. Number 36 right there on your screen, Dwight James. Uh, he was in position to make the tackle and just didn't come up with it. But you got to stop Darrell Thompson. He's the main man. He's the Walter Payton here this, uh, of this university or this program. Well, you can see those numbers, and they are impressive, not so much this year, but for his entire career. He needs barely over 100 yards to reach 3,000. And here he comes again. Mike James giving chase. And knocks it out of bounds, but not until he picked up 14 yards and another first down. This is why he, uh, you'll see from the end zone, this is why he's all Big Ten. This is why he's going to be one of the great backs to ever play here at Minnesota because he's got speed. Now he's have size at 6'1", 220, but he can outrun a safety here as he does at Dwight James with a lot of strength. Good-looking uh, physical specimen. Take a look at Dwight James. He leads the team in tackles. As a matter of fact, he leads the Big Ten in tackles. First down now. Give us to the up back, Octavius Gould, and Gould driven back by the center of the Northwestern line. Darrell Ashmore and Mike Baum is in there. Now, Mike Baum, who throughout his career has been an offensive lineman, has switched over to play the nose today, Ted. Well, Mike Baum is a fifth-year senior, and uh, he had a starting job. He started like 26 ball games for Northwestern on the offensive line, but they're hurting so much on that defensive line, they had no choice in the move number 74 here on defense. So watch him. We'll see what he can do. Well, it's quite a thing to ask of a senior who's played one way to go the other way toward the end of his career, but Bounce said he was willing, so he's in there. Second down. Schaffner. There you go, Paul. Paul Hopewell. Hopewell. Alludes John Ardwell and gets down into the 18-yard line of Northwestern. First down, Minnesota. John Ivlo, only a freshman, playing, playing quite a bit this year out of Plainfield, makes the play. But uh, really, the quarterback, Schaefer, wanted to go elsewhere, but went over to number 95 instead, and they pick up a big first down inside the 20-yard line. First and 10 from the 19. Opening drive of the game for the Gophers, and Darrell Thompson is buried by John Broker. Number 75, along with bound number 74. Well, you know, one thing that could happen is that was a trap play, a long trap play. Mike Baum might have read that pretty well because he's been trapping for the last 26 games as a starter. So a long trap that didn't work. I think if I look at it so far, Daryl Thompson's been playing a big part of this drive so far, their big tailback. <laughs> 
second and ten for Minnesota. This is Gould. Octavius Gould close to a first down inside the ten yard line. Brought down by Jeff Robinson, but again getting past the first line of defense into the, into the secondary. Well, Gould had 78 yards versus the Boilermakers. That was a week ago. And all he did here was just find the opening. Find the opening. All he has to do is cut off that center and have the ability to get into the secondary. And he's uh, built pretty sturdy to get out there and break hit tackles. Jeff Robinson playing before some home folks from Minneapolis. That's where he's from. And saved the touchdown right there. Flags are flying. We'll wait for the call right here. It's first and goal on the eight-yard line. Minnesota's opening drive of the game. Northwestern moved the ball pretty smartly, but then turned it over on the interception. And so far, it's nope. a procedure call against the Gophers, so they'll set him back five. No mics on these officials today, but we know one thing, that if I was the, uh, on the coaching staff of the Gophers, I definitely would be running the football based on the fact that they gave up 460-plus yards on the ground against Indiana a week ago. And... A lot of problems here for Northwestern, uh, not only in this drive, but all year long on the ground. Francis Pay, as well as his defensive coordinator there, Joe McConnell. All right, first down and goal again, this time from about the 13. Schaffner gives it to Thompson. And Thompson gets the five back and maybe one to spare, brought down by Ivlo and Broker. The one thing, this is a slow-hitting draw. He did it out of the eye formation real deep. The one thing about Daryl Thompson I've seen so far, this is the first time I've seen it. You'll see it on the replay. Look how long he, he gets the ball uh, five, six yards deep. But watch it. Watch his power right here. One hit, two hit, drive, three hit. He picked up an extra five yards. There he is, number 39. He had great stats, tremendous stats a year ago. Only averaging 111 yards per game, only 17 yards off last year's uh, pace. Second down, and Schaffner will take a timeout. Obviously didn't like the setup. He will go consult with his coaches. We will take a break and be back here at the Metrodome. No score, first quarter. All right, it's a second and goal now from the seven-yard line for Minnesota. Schaffner on the give. Daryl Thompson, touchdown, Gophers! Daryl Thompson with his fifth touchdown of the season, his first, though, since the Miami of Ohio game, the second game of the year. Mike, uh, without a doubt, when I saw him get the ball and get just beyond the first level, that is just beyond the defensive line, I know it was a touchdown. I just, he just ran over people, and he had such great, uh, great feel for that secondary. Great run. Well, number 48, Brett Bergland will go for the extra point. It's up, it's good. Eight minutes, 38 seconds to go, first quarter. Minnesota has gone out ahead. The score is seven to nothing. And we're seeing, unfortunately, Ted, for Northwestern fans, a familiar pattern, and that is the opposition scores the first time or first two times they get their hands on the football. And that's a good point, uh, because that's one thing that's hurt the Wildcats, and that they've always got behind early. I, in fact, two weeks ago against Army was the first time they ever went up. Uh, ever in this uh, 88 season. Here's a, a replay of this run, as I described earlier. A lead block from his pull, fullback, Gould. He just picks his spot, runs over two defenser, defenders, and works himself right over the pay dirt, into the pay dirt, over the line. As I said at the opening, Mike, I had a chance to walk around during warm-ups. I like to do that before we do a telecast. And I like to look at a guy like this because he is just built like a horse, a big racehorse. Nine plays, 63 yards. Three minutes, 51 seconds, and Daryl Thompson capping it with a seven-yard touchdown burst. It is 7-0 Minnesota. Once again, we'll see Jeff Geyer putting the ball up on the tee. Pat New is the deep man, number 25 from Bennett Academy. There's Pat. Short kick coming down to the seven. Pat New taken down by Scott Strike, linebacker. You can see Pat New is doing well in that mystical all-purpose yardage category. 
running, passing, catching, kick returns, running to and from the locker room. I don't know about that category, but you never played. That's I why understand. if you touch the ball as many as times as he did, you'd have an all-purpose category too. Spoken like a true offensive lineman who only got to spike it once in a while. <laughs> Northwestern now its second drive. And Greg Bradshaw giving off to Steve Rushall, the fullback, and Rushall stopped by Uckelberg and Trent Tripp after a game of uh, call it four yards, second and six. One of the things about Northwestern as we look at the defensive line of uh, Minnesota is that on their de offensive line, they've had some changes. Of course, Brian Tishy's banged up 62. He's not in there, a, fre a, a freshman. And pa Panovich is also out, so they've got a makeshift offensive line. Milo Panovich starting out there has had a real bad neck. He's been dinged all year. We got a flag here as Sanders turns the corner, gets up near first down yardage, brought down by Andre Thaddeus. But there is a flag in the backfield area, and that probably means a penalty against Northwestern there. 20, their 30th this season. And it will be a hold against the Wildcats, and it will come back 10 yards after the 10-yard run. One thing Francis Payne does not need is something that happened to him in the Air Force game is in the first quarter they moved the ball, but every time they started to move the ball to any uh, depth at, uh, at any point, they started to break down with penalties like this. Francis Payne now in his third year has got to start uh, producing, and certainly with penalties like this with players uh, put yourself in a real corner. It does not do a lot of good things for your field position now. You're backed up inside your own 20, and it will be a first and Check it, a second and 18, second and 16 for the Wildcats. They go into the eye now. They had started in the wishbone. Uh, and jumping offside, Anthony Bryant, number 95. A little anxious. He's out of Miami. He's a rather slender for a defensive end, as you see the call there offsides. He's only 6'3", 235. Now, in regards to uh, defensive linemen, you like him a little bit bulkier, but... He's got the speed to come up the field, but he's got to sit in there, be a little, uh, be a little patient. Miami, Florida. I wonder why he didn't go to Miami uh, Hurricanes. They, they grow a lot of good football players down in that area. Second down, 11 now. Randy McClellan in motion. Great drop, little swing. Deflected by Uckelberg, intended for Christian in the right flat, but a good play by Gary Uckelberg, the defensive tackle, along with Anthony Bryant, who's putting the pressure on. You'll see Daryl Vest, number 76, right there on the right side of your screen. He'll cut Uckelberg, but then he'll get back up, and he can't do that, and that's that's a forward pass, but you'll see there Uckelberg coming up with a big play, and the offensive lineman's got to get him down and keep him down, even if you have to hold him maybe a little bit inside underneath the vest or... But I never held. Well, you never held, right? Let's give credit where credit is due. Number 80, Skeeter Ockrey made the play. 230 pounds, 6'6", sophomore. Third down, 11. Yeah! Bradshaw's got time this time. Good catch by McClellan. No. Dropped out, knocked around by uh, Getz and Les O'Hara. So it'll bring up the first punting situation for Northwestern and bring in... The leading punter in the Big Ten, Eddie Sutter. Eddie Sutter, number 54. Of course, also is playing uh, as a linebacker. So he's doing dual duties. In fact, against Indiana, he had 13 tackles. And a 72-yard punt. This one, low driving end over end. Taken by Chris Gators, but he lets it roll. And this will also help Sutter's average. And Chris Gators gets a little of that territory back to around the 33 after the 53-yard punt, the nine-yard return. Sutter third in the country in the NCAA statistics, averaging better than 45 yards a kick. So Chris Gators, there you get a good look at him, and you'll be seeing a lot of him on the lineup tonight, not only running back punts and kickoffs, but out there on the flank as a wide receiver. Yes, he's... Uh... A kickoff returns alone, he's got 222 yards for a 22-yard average, so he's doing all-purpose things. Here we come up with that big term again, all-purpose. First and 10, 34-yard line of Minnesota. The Gophers with their second possession. Seven minutes to go, first half. Schaffner. All alone in there, the tight end, Craig Otto. And for Otto, his third reception of the season. And that is good for first down yardage up around midfield. Now we have
have an injured player down there, uh, Dan Limita, the defensive, the right tackle. You'll see here uh, on the replay, this is uh, some counter, some counter motion in the backfield, just a little play action, and all he wants to do is either hit his first level receiver or a second level receiver, which you saw just in the corner of your screen. And depending on which man is open, then he'll pick his spot and throw it to that man. As you see, the big offensive right tackle out of Aurora, Minnesota, who redshirted in 85, played in a lot of games in, uh, in 1986. In fact, he played in 789 of those, those, uh, those plays. And uh, don't, don't, we'll have a word on what's wrong with him, but certainly uh, his replacement, see who his replacement is. Should be uh, John Silvestra. Check it, they're gonna bring in uh, John Melander. And Thompson gets across midfield. Gain of four. Thompson did a nice job in the backfield of avoiding Mike Vickery, number 48, who actually slipped, slipped through that first level of the offensive line and came in there, right there, and missed a tackle. That's something that Northwestern has done a lot of this year. Well, apparently Lima, though, the big tackle, was poked in the eye, so we'll see how serious that is. We expect it back. Second down, gain of three, seven, just this side of the 50. Flames are flying again. Well, hold on. Well, Scott Schaffner has shown a lot of mobility. That's what he's in there for. We get a procedure penalty again against Minnesota, set it back five. But Scott Schaffner had been splitting time with the senior Alan Holt, Schaffner, a redshirt freshman. And uh, John Gutekunst and the coaching staff feel Schaffner gives him a lot more mobility. His arm is about the same as Holtz, and neither one of them would be confused with Dan Marino. But the trick was to get this offense moving. In fact, Minnesota had their first interception last week of the season against Purdue, and then they went on to have two more. But certainly, uh, they've been trying to hold down that spot after Foggy has left. Ricky Foggy. Second down now. Call it 12. Schaffner. Lots of time. Wide open is Chris Gators, and Chris Gators to the 35, dragged down by Jeff Robinson, along with Mike Vickery. And once again, all the time in the world for Schaffner on the straight drop. Straight drop, right. They have a zone coverage for the secondary of Northwestern, number 21, Jeff Robinson. You'll see him come into your screen playing very, very soft. You don't even see him in your screen. And all of a sudden, he comes up. He's got he's to be conscientious of those people coming underneath the zone. The linebacker's got to get back a little deeper. 19-yard gain, ball at the 36 of Northwestern. Minnesota driving again. They lead 7 to nothing. 5.45 to go, first quarter. This is Gould, Octavius Gould. And Gould, who is coming back from a couple of injuries, gets to about the 31. John Broker. And they're on the stop for the Wildcats. You know, Gould, he made a nice read. All he, all he had to do was look at Brian Williams' his center, number 63, as you see his numbers, and cuts back off uh, the center. And uh, 24 on the workhorse inside, and, of course, Thompson, the workhorse on the outside. Well, John Gutekunst has missed Gould. He's been out with a couple of ailments, but he's back in the lineup now. It certainly gives not only a running threat, but a good blocking ball for Darrell Thompson, who takes it now inside the 26-yard line. Broker again on the tackle, helped by Mike Vickery. Top. There's Broker. Broker has been very active this year. He's he's a hard worker. He's disciplined. Doesn't make any mistakes. He's not going to come up with a giant big play. While at Naperville, Illinois, he has always been a hard worker and a consistent player. Last year, he I'm sorry, last game against Indiana, he had three tackles. Army, he also had uh, seven. So he's been moving around on that off defensive line, too, because they've had some problems with uh, injuries and and whatnot. As they bring in the chains, uh, we see if the first down was made. They need about the length of two well-spaced fingers. <laughs> so William Perry's fingers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Second down and a third down and a little bit. Clock now, four minutes, 50 seconds to go, and so far, Francis Pay. Gentleman right there. Yes, Real a concerned gentleman. gentleman. Craig Otto and Shane Strain, the two messengers bringing in the play as the tight ends here for Minnesota. 
Double tight ends right now. Granado. Gets the first down and four. Octavius Gould inside the 20 before Dwight James can bring him down from the free safety spot. Well, Gould didn't do anything until he got into the third, second level, which is that linebacker level. It's these guys right here, the offensive line, that did the job. He just found his little hole, worked himself past the first group of defenders, and then from then on, he's on his own. But the offensive line up front doing an excellent job so far in this running game for Minnesota. 17-yard line, first and 10 for the Gophers. This is Thompson. Well, two touchdowns for Darrell Thompson in that one, Ted. If you're Francis Pay, you're storming the sidelines. Well, this is the thing that hurt Northwestern when they played Air Force. They were in position to make tackles. Now, this guy's not easy to bring down, I might do. But my goodness, uh, they, they had an opportunity to at least have the guy for a five-yard gain. And they're blowing horns here. Because this guy did it all on his own. He did it all on his own. Yes, he had some initial blocks. It's that long draw, and he did it. Bergland for the extra point. It's up. It's good. 14, 416 left to go. First quarter. Minnesota out ahead. Two touchdowns. 14 nothing. There's nothing quite like it any place else. You can feel it. Chicago. Oh, Chicago. Feel it all over Chicago's mind. The Bears aren't the only game in town. But when it comes to complete sports coverage, we are. Chicago. Delivery call 321-2800. Well, ready for the uh, kickoff for Minnesota. Meanwhile, Daryl Thompson has already come up with uh, 66 yards on seven carries. And there is the uh, time of possession, 246. Seven plays, 66 yards. And Daryl Thompson with the second touchdown of the quarter. He's already got his 30th career touchdown for Minnesota. Geyer. Once again, Pat New back to take it. But it's taken by one of the up men. And this is Schultz. Greg Schultz. Brought down by Pat Tinglehoff, a familiar name here in Minnesota. Schultz. Now we're going to have a chance to take a look at this touchdown. You'll see one of the best backs, not only in the Big Ten, but also look at that first block there. Look at that first, I'm sorry, that first avoid he made. There's a second missed tackle. A couple blocks downfield. I don't know what you could say about a guy who just avoids people, runs over people, and can smell the goal line. Well, Sutter and Vickery both had shots at him. Not all that clean, to be sure, but you can see why Darrell Thompson is who he is. This is Bob Christian. The good block from Byron Sanders to turn the corner, and Christian gets up near midfield. Brought down by Getz and Skeeter Ogden. I'm afraid that might be on Northwestern. But there's laundry right there. Yes. There are flags down. It might have been a clip. Randy McLennan, number seven, was in the area as he trots off the field. Let's see what the officials have to say. Well, we won't be able to hear him, but we'll get the general idea. It looks like it's coming back. Yes, there it is. Huh? Nothing against Northwestern. We'll take a look at it, Ted. It's just a, uh, they're out of the wishbone formation. They give it to the far back. The near back is number 23. Sanders, he comes up with a good block there. And maybe we can see the clip, which go right there, number seven. McLennan, yes, he blocked back, trying to make that that one big block. And it might have been the block that broke him for the big gainer, but it's Well, I'll tell you, if you saw it too, uh, Ron Getz was uh, doing a real nice holding face mask job 
on one of the Wildcats that uh, that the official did catch. Meanwhile, nullified a beautiful 23-yard gain, but then again, that's one of the reasons probably he got around the corner. Four minutes, two seconds to go. Still first down. And again, this is Christian, this time going over left tackle, brought down by Mike Sunbold, number 79, from Brooklyn Center, Minnesota. Bobby Christian gets about five yards. You know, the, the second, I'm sorry, the, the second level, oh my goodness. Where are the snakes? Uh, they certainly are friends of somebody's family, but uh, around the sidelines. No nose is good nose, I think, huh? Ouch. Second down play, Grand Charles. Intended for Rushall coming out of the backfield and overthrows Steve Rushall. Joel Stats defending on the play. Brings up third down. I'm sorry, Minnesota has been blitzing. They've been doing, uh, I'd say, a fair amount of it so far, and I was going to make the point before we had nosed out by the uh, ban on the sidelines that the, this, uh, this linebacker crew is pretty, pretty efficient for Minnesota. Uh, Getz and, and Stats and Stevens have been doing a very, very good job all year long. And of course their main man, John Leverins, isn't even in the lineup. He went down with a knee injury and he was somebody that Minnesota had hoped would bring uh, national honors. Third down play, Bradshaw. Under pressure, looks overthrows new. The pocket was collapsing. Bradshaw got an arm on there, but it was about five feet over Pat New's head. Well, I think the thing that, that Northwestern not only has been struggling with all year, but particularly here in the first quarter here in the Humphrey Dome has been always finding themselves in third and long. And uh, again, uh, we see Sutter back in the game for their, uh, I think their third punt of the game. Well, Sutter has won before and it went for over 50 yards. And this one will be picked up by Chris Gators at the 34. And Chris Gators gets across the 45 yard line. Brought down by Hopko and Walter Ding, number 40. This telecast is authorized under rights granted to Sports Vision by the PIA Radio Network and by Northwestern University solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any broadcast, rebroadcast, or other use of the accounts and descriptions of this game without the express written consent of Sports Vision, Northwestern University, and the PIA Radio Network strictly prohibited. Three minutes, eight seconds to go. First quarter, if you just joined us, that band is kind of calm from Minnesota. They should be really cheering because their gophers are up by account of 14 to nothing over the Wildcats. Darren Thompson. He's doing it. Look at that. Will. 
Nine carries, 15 yards, three TDs in the first uh, quarter. We still got some time to go yet. And you, saw, you saw Scott Schaffner right down there on the goal line to give uh, John Iwell that final bump. 21-0, Minnesota out ahead. This has been some kind of homecoming, and we're not through the first 15 minutes. You see that drive shoot up a lot of the clock, 15 seconds. Yeah, this is Bergman now to kick off. Pat New with the eight. Pat New taken down by Terry Harissick. Mike, this has been uh, part of the problem for the Northwestern offense is that every time they turn around, they're down by uh, two or three scores. It's, again, I, I'm sounding like a broken album, but here we are now leading the second quarter, and they're down 21 uh, to, to a goose egg. Tackled by number 92, Ron Mertz, for the Gophers. What kind of offense do you run when you're down 21 nothing in the first quarter? We're going to find out. They're back in the eye from their own 29. Pat New goes in motion. Latch on the rollout. And New fell down. Incomplete. Intended for Buchanan. Richard Buchanan, the leading receiver and the number three receiver in the Big Ten. He's just trying to avoid some of the rush by doing a little play action and then just what they call a sprint out. He can sprint out as far as he wants to go. He can go all the way to the sideline or the numbers, and he picks up Richard Buchanan who is having a, a very, very good year. Buchanan gains six, so it'll be a second down about four. And the give to Sanders. Byron Sanders stopped by Joel Stats. And looks like he has the first down. You know, we've asked this question of each other before and said, well, what do you do here? You just don't go back and throw. You've got to establish some kind of offensive pattern to see if you can move on these guys. Otherwise, you could be down 72 to nothing by the end of the half. I think they have to chip away. It's still early. I mean, we do have a lot of time. <laughs> which, which could go one way or the other, as they say. 2.29 to go. Rick Fisher in motion number 45. And to give us to Santa Cruz. About the 45 yard line. Gain of five. Andre Thaddeus, Delray Beach, Florida. Joel Brown, the strong safety coming up to make the stop on Sanders. You'll see number 55, your middle linebacker for Minnesota. Stats 55, just pursuing down the line, pursuing down the line, and you'll see him come in and make the tackle right there as he rolls over on his back. And that's what you need pursuit from the middle, pursuit from the far side, and the onside's got to stay strong. You stop this guy, number 23. Byron Sanders. It's Mike Alloway, the tight end, coming over to the left. Second and five. And put it to the fullback, and Steve Rush, all stopped by Ross Ockleberg. All carrying a gain of about three yards. Chris Wald uh, went out early in the first quarter. I noticed he with a little stinger. Well, he's probably had that a pinched nerve a pinch for a couple of years, a couple of games. Yes, see, we know we know for a fact that at Army he only played about well one play. He got hurt on the, on the first last play of the, uh, of the game, going over the middle. So we've seen some alterations in their tight end. Nice crowd on hand here at the Metrodome. The Vikings will play here tomorrow. Meanwhile, some kind of offense the Gophers are showing tonight. Match on third down. He wraps him up, but he gets the pass complete to Steve Rushall. Good play. Rushall taking it for first down yardage to the 40-yard line of Minnesota. Joe Brown coming up to make the stop. And there, Greg Bradshaw saw the gates closing because he got the pass off. Buchanan's wide open. I don't know why he throws. He can't throw the ball to him right here. He's wide open. Maybe he just didn't see him, but you can't see from the end zone. But he actually came in motion, broke it off at about 12 yards, but he still gets the first down. On a very big catch. Nice hand. Russell. Steve Russell. Peter Rockford. Putting the pressure on Bradshaw. First down and 10. From the 38-yard line. Once again, Trent Tripp coming up to make the stop on Sanders. Byron Sanders down to the 36. And don't look, you know, nobody's looking maybe on the Minnesota side, but Northwestern's putting together a nice drive here. Now, there's one of the reasons why they're not very efficient on first down 
is because of this fellow here, number 77, Trip, 65280, from Mondavi, Wisconsin. I wonder if they uh, drink uh, some vino. You get it? I, uh, I'm afraid I do. <laughs> Last couple of seconds of the first quarter ticking off. They will not get this play away. And they will turn around, come back the other way. Minnesota. That's the end of the first quarter here at the HHH Metrodome with the score, Minnesota 21, Northwestern nothing. Start of the second quarter, Northwestern on the Minnesota 37-yard line. Second down and nine. Bobby Christian gets wrapped up in the backfield. Trip is there, and the Skeeter Opry gets credit for that tackle. Christian never even got out of the blocks. No, he didn't. Number 80 hit him immediately. Christian on the carry. McCree. He hit him right in the backfield. And that's one thing you don't want to have happen. He's got 14 tackles this year. Is to let one of these big defensive linemen, particularly from Texas, get yourself in the backfield and do some damage. That's the, that's the way uh, fullbacks and tailbacks get hurt. Third down play. Eight to go. Uckelberg in on Bradshaw, it's Buchanan. Buchanan still on his feet. And Richard Buchanan getting first down yardage brought down by Frank Jackson, who's in there now. Jackson number 45, and a fine effort by Richard Buchanan. Well, here you see uh, Buchanan working on a freshman, James King. Just turns him around there, you see number 21, King. But this is, this is hard. He's 0-4 on the year as a member of the Wildcats, but has he given up? No. You take my shirt off me, pull me, pull my socks off, but I'm not, I'm not going to give up easy. As you see his shirt climbing up his back. There's his numbers. First and 10 for the 24. And the gain up to the 22. Rush all stopped by Joel Stats. Coach Gutekunst took over from Lou Holtz when he took the Amtrak down to South Bend. And uh, some alumni were a little sad to see him go so quickly, I'm sure. Had a lot of rebuilding to do, and he's hanging in there with a couple of decent seasons. Again on the ground, Christian stopped by Tripp. First ma major penetration for the Wildcats here in the first half. I don't think they got even close to the uh, halfway mark on this field, but now they're inside or sitting right on the 20-yard line. Again, as we see number 77, TT Trip. On third down play, Buchanan will split out to the top of your screen to the left. New bottom of your screen there to the right. And Northwestern gets a timeout with the clock running down on the 25-second timer. So we will take a break and be back here in Minneapolis. Darrell Thompson is already well over 100 yards. Less than a quarter. Stopped by Dan Trevelletti and Mike Bounds. Well, Northwestern's going to have to be tougher, not only overall, but particularly on first down. 119 yards for Darrell Thompson so far. His best this year, he had 179 against Miami of Ohio. Last week against Purdue, he was held to just 79 yards on 24 carries. Well, he's already done considerably better than that. Second and seven. Again, Thompson, and Thompson, this time Mike Baum making the play. If Mike Baum doesn't watch it, he'll never go back to offense. He makes plays like that. Oh, fine play by Mike Baum Let's playing see if his we first can see game of defense. Yes, we'll see if we can see him here on the replay. We won't see him actually make the move on the line, but he does come up right there and beats number 63, the center, Brian Williams. Very effective here, number 74. First time ever on defense. Two-time academic All-America. You know, he's smart enough to absorb the system. Well, you know those offensive linemen, they can do a lot. That's what I hear. Third down, 10. Split backfield now as Thompson comes set. 
as the 25 second clock ran out looks like it'll cost him five more Mike it looked like the uh, quarterback uh, Schaefer was trying to make an audible as you saw the backs move over to the weak side of the formation maybe trying to uh, benefit from a weakness they saw on that northwestern front well it takes them back to their own 10 and it'll be a third and 15. here's the audible he's trying to get guys to move over and he just runs out of time and a 25 second clock can tick away very very quickly third down 15 balls on the nine After with time, looking for Hopewell and overthrows him. Defended by Terry Thomas, number 47, up around the 45-yard line. Thomas uh, didn't give Hopewell much of an angle at all. This will be their first punt. Do you know who the punter is? Mike, can you figure that out? <laughs> ah, to do the punting, Brent Herbal. Ah, you did your homework. Always, always. Here's the stats. Well, Herbal. A junior he has also been known to throw out of this formation, but I doubt you're going to see that here. Maybe if Northwestern could come up with a big play and a block. Well, Buchanan waiting at midfield. Good punt by Herbal, drives it back to the 42. And Buchanan down he goes. Good coverage by Minnesota. And good field position for Northwestern now, getting the ball at the 43 yard line. 47 yard kick, no return. Max Stevens, number 94, you see him there right on top of Richard Buchanan. Now Northwestern back to work here from their own 43, as you mentioned, Ted, good field position, which is something the Cats only uh, had the last time they had the ball, and they put together a nice drive for their first points of the game. Ten and a half minutes to go, first half, 21-7, Minnesota leading Northwestern. Bradshaw, the quarterback, that's Buchanan coming in motion. Pat New at the bottom, the wide out. And the give here is to Sanders, stopped by the omnipresent Trent Tripp. Mr. Tripp's name has been mentioned uh, considerably so far here in the first part of this ball game, number 77. As you see, the rest of his defensive front. Five carries, 37 yards for Byron Sanders. Second and five from the 47. Sanders again, and he'll be about two yards short of the first down. A nice job by the offensive right guard, Calatine, D.R. Calatine, pulling around and leading the play in the point of attack. Lockery and Stevens on the stop for Minnesota. The ball just across midfield. Third and a long two for Northwestern. Byron Sanders officially, or unofficially, we should say, with a 40-yard gain so far. Sanders on his ninth carry, gets to the 45. First down, Wildcats. Brought down by Bryant and Uckelberg. A nice, a nice uh, job there by the uh, wide receiver on the near side for Northwestern. Making that uh, their first first down here of the second quarter. You see the wide receiver, I'm sorry, number seven come in, McLennan doing a nice job in caving down the inside of that off the defensive front. First to ten, we're back live. Fisher coming towards you. Check it, Pat in motion on the give. And down he goes as Bradshaw as he keeps the trench trip. On the option, and Greg Bradshaw turning it up. The same thing I saw or I noticed here back to back now. Buchanan ran in motion, he was wide open. Pat New runs the same play in motion, and he's wide open. And for some reason, Bradshaw is not seeing the motion man, which cuts right down the seat. And they there, Pat, see him. Sure. Right there. Pat New on the right side of your screen there, just ever so slightly on your screen, but wide open. Second down play, and here is Byron Sanders. Oh. And wham, King puts the hit on him. The freshman, James King. And it looks like uh, it's a first down. It sure is. The official signals first down, Wildcats inside the 35-yard line. And the Cats got a great break here. As you see King come up and make the vicious hit. 
on Sanders. Right there, puts his head on the ball, but you'll see the ball go out of bounds for the first down. Luckily for Northwestern, they pick up the extra yardage by a fumble. But King put his helmet right into the ball and knocked it free. First down, Wildcats on the 33-yard line of Minnesota. Northwestern scored the last time and had the ball looking again. The block is Sanders. Gets to the 20. And an excellent block. It looked like uh, it was at best who disparate in putting the block on Sunbolt and making the play for Minnesota. Well, from the ground level, you'll see Sanders running, wanting to show the Minnesota bench that they also can run like Daryl Thompson as he cuts back across the grain. And that's the most serious penetration. 21-yard line, first and 10. Northwestern. Sanders will do it to the right this time, and Sanders gets around the 15. Joel Stats coming up to make the stop, and Northwestern now with eight minutes to go in the first half is putting together another good drive. It's second in a row. Sanders here now with his 12th carry, already 69 yards in the first half. Just showing his speed as he outruns Joel Stats, number 55, to pick up another, oh, five or six yards. Well, it's turning into quite a ground duel between Darrell Thompson and Byron Sanders. Second down. And it is Rushall stopped by Stevens and Stats. Look, First down Northwestern. I'm sorry, Ted. I was just going to say it looked very early in the game like this was going to be a big runaway, but if Northwestern can punch it in here at golden goal from the eight-yard line, we got a ball game on our hands, Mike Lederman. Right you are, number 64. It's going to make that man, Francis, pay a whole lot happier. First and goal from the eight. This is Christian. As they say, we'll have to wait, but there was a lot of crimson and gold around there, but Northwestern signaling they've kept possession. If it's a tie, it goes to the offender, as we know. <laughs> if you can unravel the bodies. The offender gets offensive. And there it, it is. Be. There's Whoa. the call. Second down. The Longhorn number two means second down. Here's the replay coming up. This is the thing that it's beat Northwestern all year. Here's an opportunity to get back in a football game. And then Christian pops it up. There's no reason. Obviously, he's trying to give a second and third effort. Let's he must hold the football. Let's so O'Hara knocked it free. We'll try to see who came up with it. I believe Mike Alloway, the backup tight end, making a fine play. Very lucky, Mike. Well, this team, let's be honest, this team can use a little luck. Ball's on the three, second down. There's a good looking Bob Christian. They split the backfield. That's new in motion. Two men open. Bradshaw Christian, touchdown Cats! Beautiful fake into the line by Bradshaw and wide open Bobby Christian beating Les O'Hara who had two men to defend. You can't do it, Ted. That's right. It's a two-on-one situation and luckily for Northwestern, both of those receivers separated giving him the, uh, the, the feasibility to throw to two of the one men. I'm sorry, to either one of those two men. And I, you know, there's an old saying, I'd rather be lucky than good. And Northwestern ain't all that good, but they sure are lucky here with that fumble recovery. Well, they're now putting a nice system together right here. Adler's kick is good. There's timeout on the field, 7.09 to go in the half. We've got ourselves a ball game. Minnesota 21, Northwestern 14. There's a look at Bob Christian, and let's see his handiwork. Here we have it. They just faked the dive into the fullback, and then you got the two-on-one there as a great effort by Christian just getting the ball over for six, making this game a lot closer than we thought. His second touchdown reception of the season. Here is Foreman to kick it off. And Gators will take it, a short kick on his 12. Another good block. Adams to beat. And Dirk Adams slowing up Gators. Another excellent kickoff return by the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Well, 
Now, this is nothing more than defensively Northwestern getting out of their lanes. And you can't rely on Dirk Adams, a, a, a place kicker right there, number two, that'll probably weighs about as much as a fly soaking wet to end up stopping a big play. Giving this potent offense good field position is like a throwing fuel on the fire. Well, Craig Foreman, the kicker, made the stop with a lot of help from Dirk Adams to slow him down. The ball's inside the 40 yard line of Minnesota, uh, Northwestern of Minnesota, with Darrell Thompson taking it now. To the 37, stopped by Frevoletti, the linebacker, and Roker, and bound. Well, an effective drive. We've got John Ivlo down here as Francis Pay goes out to check his young rover. Meanwhile, a good sustained drive, 10 plays, 57 yards, three and a half minutes, and Bobby Christian gets his touchdown from Craig Bradshaw. John Ivlo is down from Plainfield, the young man who's come on to play a lot of rover. And he's a, yeah, and he's only a freshman, too, and he's had a very uh, good year for a freshman, all considered. He actually started his first ball game ever at the Air Force Academy. And at the Air Force Academy, he had three tackles. He came back again against Indiana, picked up another nine. He didn't play much against Army. He was kind of demoted. I'll tell you a story about this young man. When I was playing for the Chicago Bears, I went down to Plainfield as they check his right knee, which is not a good situation. And I went down to do a personal appearance, and I picked, as audience, audience, audience participation is always important, I picked someone out of the audience, and I picked a young man with blonde hair who was about nine years old. Guess what? It was John Ivlo. He, he told me you? that story at Air Force <laughs> Academy in the hotel. I want to know if he beat you arm wrestling. Yeah, we arm wrestled him. Of course he beat me. <laughs> well, he is up under his own power. And does not have his right leg at all under pressure. Not touching on the pavement. Well, you hate to see it as they take John uh, Ivlo off. We remind you, head coach Francis Pay will join Joe McConnell Monday night at 6.30 on Sports Vision for the Francis Pay Show. The coach will discuss tonight's game, complete with all the highlights. There'll also be a segment featuring two Wildcats and the pros. Under John Kidd and special teams all-pro Steve Tasker, both in the Buffalo Bills. So watch the Francis Pay Show every Monday at 6.30 on Sports Vision. All right, play is back in. 6.40 to go. Minnesota second down. And this is Octavius Gold, Darrell Ashmore pursuing him along with Thomas Homko and Broker in there for good measure. Good pursuit by the Cats. Very good. Second and six. I'm sorry, Ted. I was just going to say, there's uh, my new friend, Ivlo. He did end up walking on his own from the, probably from the numbers over to the bench. At first, he was not putting any pressure on it at all. A really, really bright young man trying to make his name to be reckoned with at Northwestern. Only a freshman. Started his first ball game a couple weeks ago. Now they're working on his ankle. Loss of three. Third down now, 10. Schaffner looking for Hopewell. Tipped down. Intercepted. No. Thomas had both hands on it, but he scored it free after the deflection by Hopko. And it was intended for Paul Hopewell, the freshman number 85, and he is down. You know, defensive backs practice this all the time. They call it the tip drill because it's tipped right there by Hopko and then an opportunity for an interception. And they practice that. It's a good Saturday drill if you're in professional football. It's a good Friday drill if you're in college football. Well, it looked like he got pretty close to possession right there. I mean, he should have been running with that, and I think that was his problem. As you see, his anguish. He should have caught it first and then ran with it. Well, it brings up a fourth and ten as Hopewell is being attended to the freshman from Moeller High School where he and Scott Schaffner played together. Pass and catch. Run and block. We're at 5.45 to go in the first half. Mike Lederman, Ted Albrecht here at Minnesota. The Gophers jumping out to an early 21-0 lead in the first quarter on three touchdowns by Darrell Thompson. This is a beautiful dome. This is a tremendous dome. You see Paul Hopewell being helped off the field. And as we were uh, saying, Northwestern coming back with two straight scores. And Paul Hopewell is obviously in some kind of discomfort as he's helped off the field. Well, the hunting situation for Minnesota. And it's the fake. 
Northwestern is not fooled. Craig Otto dragged down by Kurt Lundegren. And I tell you, Ted, I don't know about you, but that looked like it was coming to me. I mean, there was, it was not a little, little more obvious plays that can't be found. Well, it was good timing for the Gophers because they're really moving the football. Now, they had in the last couple series, but you got to think they're going to move the football. And it was a good, a good chance, a good risk to take an opportunity like that. Well, John Broker in there on the stop, and Broker's played a heck of a game so far. Meanwhile, Northwestern goes to work. Now. And this is Byron Sanders again into the secondary, gain up to the 47-yard line before Trent Tripp tripped him off. Didn't say that fast three times. Five and a half minutes to go, and a good game for Sanders. And again, we get a go for down. This time it's Ross Uckelberg, the big uh, right tackle, defensive right tackle. Byron Sanders putting some numbers together for himself, too. 76 yards so far. Well, I think this whole Northwestern uh, team is starting to change the momentum, much like the Duke game. They got down down early and then came back, particularly in the second half. You remember that game? They changed the momentum around, and that's something that they've done here again today, or this evening, I should say. And that fake punt uh, helped that momentum. As Byron Sanders now 75 yards on 13 carries. Hey, we remind you, the Chicago Bulls and Michael Jordan, the league's most valuable player, return to the floor of Chicago Stadium Friday at 7.30. The Bulls host the Milwaukee Bucks preseason NBA action. First opportunity to get a good look at the Bills Friday, 7.30, here on Sports Vision. Let's get a good look at the Wildcats right now. Second down, four. 47. Rick Fisher comes in motion. Byron Sanders doing some yeoman work right here, and Sanders has the first down crossing midfield to the 48-yard line of Minnesota, brought down by Ron Getz and Skeeter Ockrey. Also number 37, the safety came up to make a nice play. I'm oh, sorry, Getz, number 37, made a nice play to come up. As you see him here from his offside linebacker position, keep, keeping the point of, of reference to the line of scrimmage, always staying square and doing a nice job. First down, 10, Minnesota Territory. Alloway, the tight end, has come in for Griswold. Sanders to the left. And this time, Lockley, and the right side of the line. Gary Isaacson, also the freshman in there to meet him. Lockley coming over for Sewer from the left side. Minnesota right away wondering what's going on. They've got to tune things up a little bit. We're going to have to come on the ball a little bit harder. Right. Well, I'm sure they'll try and discuss how they can uh, make some changes offensively. That's the running back coach for uh, the Gophers talking to his backfield, saying, come on, guys, let's get the momentum back. No gain on that play, second and ten. One back offense. Bradshaw, lots of time over the middle. He's complete to Sanders. And Sanders, first down yardage at the 35. Sanders coming out of the backfield that time. Joel Brown in on the stop. And we've got a flag, though, back behind the line of scrimmage. Sanders running free in the zones, just finding his, uh, his area and doing nothing but in between the hash marks and just looking for an open hole. And this one's going to go against Minnesota. Personal foul. It's a personal foul roughing the passer against the Gophers, so this will bring it further down toward the Gopher goal line. Northwestern could tie this game up with uh, 4.02 left to go in the game. Well, they have the ball on the Gophers 20 right now. You can see the score, 21 to 14, the first 21 for the Gophers, and the Wildcats have come back with two scores, and they're on the march for a third. And Bradshaw getting some direction from the bench. Official time right here. Bradshaw has just completed his fifth pass in a row. And uh, this is a good opportunity, as you see the offensive coordinator there for this offense. Oh, we've got a problem with the chains over on the far side of the field. I guess they're trying to get them unscrambled. Well, I think Francis Pay was having some of his reserve players move the links around to hopefully tighten that up so they can get the extra yardage. Does, that, does that happen in this? All, all the time, I all know. the time. I know, I used to be a linesman in high school, too. I used to wind that thing around so tight. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but that, that doesn't happen, really. There's Francis. He's seen this thing turn around for him. 
things looked again very dismal as the uh, Daryl Thompson show started off with well over 100 yards in the first quarter alone for Minnesota. But this uh, not not giving up defense has come alive for for Minnesota. And now uh, I'm sorry for Northwestern, and they're back in this game. Well, Minnesota, a very heavily penalized team, already has six for 50 yards. Northwestern, two penalties for 25. Play is back in now. Clock is running under four minutes to go. First down from the Minnesota 20. Rushall, the fullback, takes it, and Steve Rushall gets down to the 15-yard line. Joel Stats on the stop, a gain of five, second and five. You look at Northwestern's... Uh, as you see, number 55, the middle linebacker stats. But if you look at Northwestern scoring from quarter to quarter, their biggest quarter has always been the second quarter. The following so far, 31 points in the second quarter, and that's been the story here so far in this second quarter as well. Second and five. In the eye with Rush off the up back. Sanders the tailback. And this is Byron Sanders for a couple. Stopped in there by Joel Brown again. We've called his number a lot tonight, number nine. Yeah, what Joel Brown did there is he faked the, you see him number nine, he actually faked the blitz and he walked back off into his flex position and then came back up and on again and actually timed the snap beautifully and came in for the yard loss or actually uh, almost for no game. McClellan and Buchanan, the wideouts come in. Third. Greg Schultz and Marcus Lang. A very big play, Mike, for Northwestern here. Fisher and Lang come out, and Bradshaw saw the clock running down. The 25-second clock was down to four, and he called the timeout again. A smart play by Bradshaw. They have had problems, Northwestern has, getting plays off on time. But in this situation, Bradshaw certainly did the right thing. You saw the statistics there, the third down conversions. Minnesota has yet to convert a third down. Northwestern, four of eight. And here with 2.38 to go, call the timeout, get things straight, because at third and four, this is certainly the most important play of this first half of the Northwestern Wildcats. They want to make sure they go every over over their their play scheme inside the 20-yard line, and that's what they're doing, is trying to pick the, be the best play they possibly can based on tendencies off film that they've uh, taken from the Gophers' last three football games. So now, obviously, they made that decision, and with completing now six in a row, Greg, uh, Bradshaw has completed his last six. Good number, six for 11, two touchdowns to one interception. And here it is, third and four. Ball's on the 14-yard line of Minnesota. You count it in motion. Close to the first down. This will be very close, but it looks to be maybe a half yard short. All you coaches at home, get ready for your decision. Stats gets Joel Brown coming in to save that. And they did, and they did not make it, but a great effort by Sanders. Just a tremendous effort. And you'll see it here. We've got a blitz on number 80 from the left side, but he just, just tremendous, tremendous hit. Again, 35% of the time, Northwestern has made it on third down conversions, and it looks like they're going to go it, go for it here on fourth down. Fourth and one, the 25-second clock is down to nine. A lot of noise in the Metrodome. Three seconds, two, they get it off. Bradshaw on the bootleg. Bradshaw to the five, first and goal, Northwestern. A gutsy call by the bench, and Francis Pay to go for it on fourth down. And I gotta hand it to him, you got nothing to lose, Mike, when you're 0-4 and you've got the ball inside the 10-yard line. And a great play by this young man, fifth-year senior, Greg Bradshaw. He knows all he needs is a yard, and he ends up picking up five. Well, he may have been looking at some films from Northern Illinois because Marshall Taylor, the NAU quarterback, almost did the same thing, standing still and then running for a touchdown. Sanders! That's a tie ticket, 21-20. Byron Sanders, five-yard touchdown, and the Wildcats are within one point of tying this game up after digging themselves a 21-point hole. I'm going to go back to your opening, Mike, where you said the spoilers are in town to spoil the homecoming, and as I look at the fans here, the alumni and the followers of this program, they got to be shell-shocked because they thought they had a blowout go. 
that's the kind of thing that doesn't turn around very easily. Once a team catches this momentum and believes in itself and catches the other team going to sleep, it's awful tough to turn it around. Adler for the tie. Well, there's timeout on the field, a minute 28 to go. First half, Northwestern has come back. And a touchdown from Byron Sanders to tie this game at 21. This is why Sanders uh, was the leading rusher last year for Northwestern because he can make a good decision. Nothing over tackle, breaks it out, shows his speed, and puts this game back into a 21-21 tie. And if I was uh, on that Northwestern plane going home, that they can win this one after coming back from 21-point deficit, it's got to be a thrill. Nine plays, 59 yards, 4-12 on the clock. Another good sustained drive by the Wildcats. And there is excitement on that bench, really, for about the first time this season. And rightly so. 21-21 tie, a minute 28 to go. You see the summary, Byron Sanders with 90 yards on the ground. Nearly all of that here in the second quarter, as they have kept, and this is another very important factor, they have kept that Minnesota offense sitting and the defense on the field giving their own defense a chance to rest Ted. well Bradshaw was almost stymied early in the game in the air but he's ended up now with a six of 13 for 70 yards so uh, Northwestern making a game of it Gators the deep man take off the up man and Gators will take it on the eighth the other way with the kick, and this time Gators doesn't break it past the 25, gets to about the 27. And you know the special teams had a lecture from the Northwestern <laughs> coaching staff before Foreman kicked that one off. First down, Minnesota. You'll see uh, a run back from the field level, level, I'm sorry, Gators, who's averaging 22 yards of return, and what he's done so far today, that average is going to go way up. And, uh, 19-yard return on that one. Robert Walton on the stop, number 42. First and 10, Minnesota from the 28-yard line. Schaffner, Johnson, drill the forward pass, so it's incomplete. Tried to set that up with a screen, pulling their offensive uh, left guard and offensive uh, left tackle, but to no avail. This man I know wants to get it going, as you'll have a chance to see it. First, they start out with a little fake to their fullback as they roll out to the far side, and then he's not, uh, you know, he's not God. He can uh, make mistakes. John Broker coming up to make the play if by some chance Thompson caught the pass. Second down, 10. Schaffner has got his tight end, Otto. Short of the first down, Kyle Palmer, the rover, the stop. Clock ticking now with 1.02 to go, and Craig Otto is not getting up. Well, you'll see very excited uh, senior Kyle Palmer there, number three, as you see the injured player. One thing about Kyle Palmer is that he lost his job at the beginning of the year. He had to fight for it in spring ball, then he came back after losing it to actually start against Army and picked up four solo tackles, and he has fought with everything to get this position back from uh, John Ivlo as well as Bill McLaughlin, and he deserves to play. A very nice tackle for uh, for about a five-yard gain. Let's take a look at, uh, at Otto, and he took quite a pop from Kyle Palmer. I guess we're going to take a look at it again. Our producer director, Tim Sutton's got the action. You'll see the little roll out here, and then you'll see the, just the clinic pop right in the face. Boom! Wow. And he drove him back. Shoulder right into the face mask there. You see another Stop. angle here. I don't know if you, it's not quite as good. Ooh, well, <laughs> it's a head snapper. You see that head snap back there? I well, we certainly hope he's all right as the Minnesota trainers are working on Craig Otto, the senior tight end. While we have a moment, we can tell you in the Big Ten today, Illinois over Purdue, 20 to nothing. Wisconsin losing at Iowa, 31 to six. Michigan State. Having a tough time. Michigan beat them 17 to three, and of course the big one, Indiana 41, Ohio State seven. Indiana is tough, 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 tough. Anthony Thompson only 190 yards, and four touchdowns. Not a bad afternoon's work, huh? 
as you see the Big Ten logo here, which sits in the end zone here at the Metro Dome. That mi the uh, Big Ten did not have much success early in the non-conference games, but is becoming very competitive here uh, in the regular season or in the conference games. And Francis Bay wants to make his boys a little bit more competitive. There you see number 96, Dale Ashmore. He's a six foot seven, 265 pounds sophomore, or as they say, sophomore. Sophomore. We got to tell you this, Monday night at 7, tune in for in-depth discussion and debate of all the sports with the sports writers on TV. Ben Bentley, Bill Gleason, Bill Jass, and Rick Tellender bring you yesterday's, today's, and tomorrow's events on Sports Vision. Uh, they are still attending to Craig Otto, and Craig Otto has not moved very much. And everybody is extremely concerned around here. We certainly do not want to minimize that. There you see he is getting up. You fold your left arm like that, a lot of times it could be a shoulder, and it looks like he is folding his left arm towards his chest, which means he could have a shoulder, a left shoulder there. Greg Otto, as you see, uh, has been a big part of this defense so far this year. Well, he is walking with some assistance, but still obviously looks cognizant of what's going on. And Clay will be back in just a second as Otto makes his way with help off the field. Third down three, I'm sorry, to third three from the 35 with a minute three left to go. Oh, we can wait. All right, action is back in here. The split backfield now with Gould and Thompson. Shafter with the third down. Shafter shoots it out. This is complete to Jason Bruce. And Bruce has the first down across the 40 to the 43. To see from the end zone, Terry Thomas is supposed to come over and support this. When he sees back out on his side, a receiver on his side, he's supposed to turn number 47. is supposed to come up at number three, Kyle. I'm sorry, Kyle is supposed to come up and support that. Clock is running, 45 seconds to go. First down from the 43-yard line of Minnesota. Schaffner can't get away from Baum and Lundegreen. Scott Schaffner taken down after a gain of one. More important, it eats up clock. 30 seconds to go. The clock is still ticking. Give me yards. Second down time for the 44. In the flat, he's got Thompson, and Thompson getting very little. Maybe three yards for his knocked out of bounds. The crowd wanted a bit of a late hit there. Gators was wide open in the last two plays as they call a timeout. And you'll see here all they're trying to do is just uh, work the clock, that is, get the ball towards the sidelines so they can use the sidelines as a timeout versus taking their own timeout. I don't know what the crowd was uh, wanting there. There certainly was no horseplay on the on the behalf of that defense. I'm going Jeff Robinson in there to combine on the stop. Ten seconds to go. So a chance uh, for one play, maybe two. You're looking at Craig Otto, who took that shot. You saw him get hit uh, in the replay with the helmet on the shoulder, and they're definitely working on the left shoulder. You'll see it coming up. Look at the left shoulder, the shoulder that's turned in right there, and he took it right underneath that pad, the shoulder pad, and then he drives him back. Right, Dwight James is going to be playing center field with 10 seconds to go. Free safety as you look at Kyle Palmer. James about 20 yards behind him. Schafter intended for Gators. Gators makes an acrobatic catch, but doesn't have a foot in bounds as he lands. Schafter didn't look at anybody else. He wanted Chris Gators all the way on that set. Nice catch, but out of bounds. He was just running out of room, and Northwestern pressured him to make sure he did run out of room. And the way you do that is just squeeze him down towards the sideline and give him no place to go, except out of bounds. That's what, that's what he does here. So that's why he ran out of out of, uh, out of round. And now what's happening is that the Northwestern fans are booing. Well, I don't know. The Minnesota won. fans may be booing because they're going into a fourth down uh, situation and setting up in punt formation. And there will be a run back. Although Northwestern just lets it bounce into the end zone. Time will expire. The gun has gone off. We have had one whale of a first half. Two different games. Northwestern winning the second quarter after Minnesota winning the first. We're tied at 21 as we head for the locker room.
a tie ball game. The statistics are pretty close, too. They're very close, Mike, and the thing that I see is time of possession. The reason that it's so awkward is Minnesota scored really on two big plays by Darrell Thompson, which really took up no time in the clock. On the other hand, Northwestern drove the ball up and down the field after getting absolutely nothing in the first quarter, really turned it around. And, and that's really been and that's really been the key here is that they've actually have minimized their mistakes and their turnovers and have capped themselves right into a 21-21 tie after being down 21 points. And Greg Bradshaw, I'll give him credit. He's showing a lot of poise as a field general after having a couple of shaky ball games. He's poised back there. His line is giving him some time to throw. And he's also turned a couple up on the rushes for gains. John Goodekunst, the coach for Minnesota, Francis Pay, the coach of the Wildcats, both, I'm sure, have some interesting things to tell their respective charges at halftime, and we will get underway now with Northwestern kicking off to Chris Gators, the deep man, number two, and we have seen a lot of Gators tonight. Driving kick sends Gators back to the one. And Walt missing him there. Gators almost brings it again, bringing it out past the 30-yard line. Dwight James in there on the stop, along with Mike Vickery, number 48. And Marlon Collins, the defensive back on the special teams, number 26. 31 yards for Chris Gators, so the ball first and 10 for Minnesota on their own 32-yard line. Scott Schaffner, the freshman quarterback, making his first start as a gopher. Behind him, Octavia School, number 32, the fullback, and Darrell Thompson, who had a very quiet second quarter after being all world first. Quick flip on a slam and complete to Jason Bruce. And Jason Bruce is about two steps away from breaking that one. For a six, gets to the 50. Well, you got to imagine that the each individual coach on this on this Gophers football team has probably told their players, look, if you don't come out and win this game, it's going to be a long week, and they're trying to set the pattern here early. Be a first down just on this side of the 50 for Minnesota. Call it their own 49. Thompson's first carry. Dan Trevelotti, the linebacker, first to meet him as he crosses midfield. Call a gain of two. It will bring up a second and eight. There's Prevaletti. He made a nice move just working down the line of scrimmage. And that's important not to overrun the back like Sanders because he cut it back with his speed. As you see, this is just a quick toss to Sanders. Just one-on-one -on -one blocking. And there's Prevaletti, 44, making a solo tackle. Gain of four, actually. Second down and six. Thompson to the right. Two good blocks. A good pursuit by Dwight James, number 36, and Kevin Peterson, the outside linebacker. Again, a nice job uh, inside by the force people of Northwestern. Those Wildcats came up and just wanted to force the play. You'll see him crash down on uh, on uh, on the lead the lead blocker, which was uh, Gould, and then they get good pursuit from the secondary. And if you can take out them before they take out you, give a guy like Peterson to come over and make a good tackle. Kevin Peterson, the leader of the linebacking core, and a man that Francis Pay wants to really establish as a team leader on the defense. Third down. And all kinds of flags are flying. Preliminary signal is a uh, procedure penalty against Minnesota, which will take it back five and make it a third and seven. Well, London Green actually was in the neutral zone. I don't know if they snapped it while he was still in the neutral zone or not. Here comes the, the official call. That'll go against Minnesota. So something must have drawn London Green off to draw him into the neutral zone. And obviously one of those offensive linemen not sitting still in a three-point stance. That's really going to help uh, Northwestern possibly kill this drive. Because now it's, uh, I think, Mike going to be maybe, what, third and... Third and along seven. Okay. From uh, the Northwestern 48, this is the initial drive of the second half. Minnesota again with a good kickoff return, a 17-yard pass for to start things off. Then Northwestern's the pace is stiffened here on third down. Get that man, Goose! Get that man, Goose! 
Gators to the near side. Shaft looking on the slam and beautifully knocked away by Thomas. Intended for Bruce. Same play they got 17 yards on the first time they tried it. This time it's incomplete. And the Gophers will have to punt it away. A nice uh, adjustment here by the quarterback, Schaffner, but he doesn't uh, he doesn't make the completion only because Terry Thomas played it so well, played it very well, and breaking that up as Francis Payne reminds him of a few pointers. Buchanan standing at his own check it. That's uh, McClellan take the fair catch at the 15 yard line, and Randy McClellan gives NU possession after a 33 yard punt by Brent Herbal. Well, Northwestern scored the last three times it had the ball to close out the first half. Let's see what the Wildcats will do with pretty poor field position here to start the second. Greg Bradshaw, the fifth year senior quarterback from Woodstock is in there. Had a good first half. Byron Sanders, who ran wild and effectively in the second quarter. The tailback, Steve Rushall, number 28, the upback, the fullback. That's Pat Newman, number 25, in motion. Sanders. Short game, Trent Tripp. Joel Stats, the middle linebacker, up to make the stop. Max Stevens, number 94, applauds his work. And to give you a comparison how things change so quickly in this game we call football, is yes. that... Uh, Darrell Thompson comes up with 116 yards, and right behind him, little Byron Sanders comes up with an additional 90 himself. So this game is nowhere out of out of line. I think it's under control. Three minutes gone in the third quarter. Here's Sanders on the sweep. And well strung out by the Gophers. It'll bring up a third and long. Ross Uckelberg, Trent Tripp. Both in there to make the stop, and Sanders gains two. It'll bring up a third down five. A very nice job. You mentioned his name, Uckelberg. He does an extremely good job of just staying with his man, fighting that reach block, avoiding the opportunity to be reached, and letting Sanders run outside. Northwestern spending a lot of time in the huddle, now down to 16 seconds. So a big play uh, for the Wildcats. And we've got all sorts of action here, and this should go against the Wildcats. Brett Dirks, the uh, left tackle, jumped off. Dirks playing in place of Mike Baum, who, as we mentioned, has switched over to the defense tonight. It has made quite a difference. Call a legal procedure, third down 11. Ah, that's it. What is he doing? What is he doing? Ah, he's going Don't to you get know the snap count? Boy, you know, you take a lot of heat in the, in the film study when you do that. Oh. Cardinal sin. Two receivers. Mike left. You can't at the top of your picture to the right. And they give us to Sanders on the draw. Sanders gets room. He gets a first down. Excellent run by Byron Sanders. Good call by the Cats. A real nice play. Well executed by the entire offensive line. And once Sanders broke past the line of scrimmage, he ended up getting that first down only on his own. You'll see him just break between the outside tackle. And here is where the second effort comes in. Here is where he sustained this drive and picks up the first down. First and 10 for the 27, Northwestern. Sent Sanders to the left. And Sanders again twisting and spinning across the 30. Anthony Bryant, Les O'Hara make the stop. O'Hara played his high school ball at Lane Tech. Played for Sam Bronswick. Six yard gain, and uh, Sam Bronswick had himself quite a win this weekend over Taft. Shutting him out. Played in that concrete stadium out there. Ron Addison. And here he's at the dome. Second and fourth, the 33. Pat New in motion. Sanders. Sanders looks to be about a yard short of the first out. Bring up third. Sanders right now uh, is closing in on 100 yards already. And as I see my stat man to my left, he has exactly 22 carries for 112 yards. This is no uh, this is no mystery to Sanders. He picked up 133 yards at Air Force 
first there at Colorado Springs about three weeks ago. But you know, you really see him running tonight with enthusiasm, with authority. Not that he didn't before, but you can really yes. feel this team has picked up the gear. Yes, he is really playing with intensity. Well, as my old track coach used to say, they're raising an octave. No idea what he meant there. I don't know now. Up to the 39-yard line, Sanders doing the workhorse routine. Under 10 minutes to go now, third quarter with Max Stevens and Skeeter Ockrey on the stop for Minnesota. I think they're just trying, uh, Northwestern is just trying to sustain some time here. They certainly dominated time with 18 to 11 minutes in the first half. And Sanders running well here up behind a pretty uh, strong offensive line. Game three, second and seven for the 40. Once again, it's Sanders. And Sanders gets four. Ockery bringing him down again. Some help from Bryant. Well, Byron Sanders is no stranger to hard work. I mean, he carried 46 times in this game against the Gophers last year. He likes that. Only racked up uh, 295 yards. And against Duke, he carried for about... 23 yards, said he wasn't in there long enough to work up a sweat. Well, he's sweating plenty tonight. Third down play. Long three. Guess who's got it? Guess who's got the first down? It looks like Sanders has it across that line, but they'll measure. Max Stevens. Mike, I think you better check your eyes. That's about uh, at least a yard plus. Okay, okay. Nice guy. My partner corrects me. Attendance tonight, about 44,500. Nice crowd here at the Metrodome, you were saying? Well, one of the things, the idea here was the university, when they built the Dome, is to get some night games so they can get a little bit more attendance. But remember, if you don't win, you get no attendance. Hey, there we are. Do we count in the right attendance? Under the, right under the total timeouts, three and three. All right, first and ten for Northwestern. I'll let you figure out who carried that one. Trent Tripp made the stop. Trent Tripp, we've called his number quite a bit, as we have for this gentleman, Byron Sanders. Nothing more than lead your fullback up in there. Something that uh, Sanders has not uh, been taking too much pounding. Here's the king and queen, and is in her royal court. Uh huh. Where did he get that crown, Ted? Probably flew over to the uh, Winchester uh, Palace in London to pick that up. <laughs> All right. Second down, gain of three, seven to go. Bradshaw's first pass in the second half, looking for new. Triple coverage, and Les O'Hara breaking it up down at the 10-yard line, intended for Pat New. Well, I like that call. The reason I like that call is because we haven't done it, or I'm sorry, Northwestern hasn't done it we haven't either. all game. Okay. And... Uh, what, really what happens here is that when you send one man out, uh, you tend to draw a crowd, and there was definitely three defenders there to make sure he didn't catch that football. Now brings up a third to seven. Bradshaw had a string of nine straight completions stopped. And we'll see what the whistle is here. Well, they certainly haven't run out of time. There was 12 seconds to go in the 32nd. No, there was a timeout. Minnesota will take a timeout, so shall we. 7.37 to go, third quarter. Uh, I know, he got that crown for eating margarine. No question, no question. Just popped up on his head. I rate that a three. Third and seven now. Northwestern with the third down situation here just across midfield. Bradshaw's got Stevens to contend with. Touchdown. This is Christian. This play was tried before. It was a touchdown had it not been for Joel Brown. We said this when they worked it the first time. The that's ball right. took a little long to get over there, and that's what stopped the touchdown. And if we see the replay here, it was a first down, which I think is very valuable, but he got so much pressure because of a blitz. Look at this pressure. If he had more time to throw it, if he had more time and more zip on the ball, look, you've got three guys open there, and if he would have caught the ball sooner, he would have outran number nine. Joel Brown and could have had the touchdown. Well, good call. A good call and a good play. First and 10 from the 40. Northwestern moving again. 
The up back now, Steve Russell, the fullback stopped by Stevens, and Russell gets about four yards. Seven minutes, 15 to go, third quarter. There was a time in this uh, in this drive where Byron Sanders carried the ball nine straight times. Then they went up top to try to go deep with Pat New, and then they threw that screen with a timeout. So he has carried the ball, it looks like, about nine times out of the last 12 plays. By Byron Sanders being the real workhorse here in the, in the third quarter. Second and six. And this is Christian, flags it down. Christian gets first down yardage. But we'll check out the penalties, and they look to be against the Wildcats. Stats and Stevens on the stop. The Gophers are ranked seventh right now in the Big Ten at rushing yards per game with 181.8. And they certainly are giving up yards so far here in the uh, in this ball game. They gave up 146 yards to Northwestern, as you see the call. Well, you know what's interesting, Ted? Even though Northwestern uh, knows that, and Minnesota has a very good statistical pass against ranking, being third in the Big Ten. The secondary here, we were talking to the coaching staff, the publicity staff before the game, feel the secondary is very, very soft. Very, very soft. susceptible. So you work the run, you work the run, then you open it up with the pass, and that's exactly what Francis Bay has got great Bradshaw doing. Now he's got a second and 11. Procedure call against the Wildcats, takes the ball back across the 40. Six minutes, 35 seconds to go. Pass is complete down to the 30, close to the first down. Picking it up is Bob Christian. And Christian, before Ron Getz gets him, gets about a yard short of the first. Just a straight five set, I'm sorry, a seven step drop and going right over the middle. Christian coming out of the backfield, just sitting down in between the linebackers and just shy of the secondary and picks up a good solid 10 yards. And here we come. Has uh, three receptions with 22 yards so far. Third down. First down as Rushall carries. Stevens on the stop along with Eddie Miles, number 28, the middle linebacker. You know, this is just a totally different defense than we saw in the first quarter here the, 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 uh, of the Gophers. The Gophers were just unstoppable on defense because they were just stopping everything in sight. And the offensive coordinator for the for the uh, Northwestern Wildcats is going to be thrilled with this drive, consuming a lot of the clock. Ball's on the 25 of Minnesota now. First down. That's no and the give for short yardage stopped by Ockrey. Byron Sanders. You know, Ira Alder, who is the place kicker and field goal kicker for the Minnesota, I'm sorry, for the Northwestern Wildcats, has only got two attempts and one field goal. And uh, he doesn't want to be negative, but he certainly would like to get in and kick a field goal here, while the offensive coordinator would like to see a touchdown. Yeah, I think you just assume watch him take six. Randy Walker looking on there and gesturing in. Running backs coach. And here is Byron Sanders and Sanders. Oh, touchdown Wildcats. Byron Sanders, his second touchdown, and Northwestern, for the first time this season, has a lead. In the second half, they came out against the Cadets and were up 7 to 3 right. and produced two turnovers for 13 points. But the key to this play was the offensive left tackle, Brett Dirks. He pulled around there. He opened up a hole for Sanders, and you and I and the camera crew could walk through. I forgot about Army. Northwestern did have that 7 3 halftime lead, but it evaporated early in the third quarter. This is the latest the Cats have had any kind of an edge. And Ira Adler makes it 28 21. Northwestern has scored its last four times. They lead Minnesota by seven. 16, 10, and 9. That's 41 plays. Here's a nice way to spend a Saturday night if you're a Wildcats fan. Francis Pay, Byron Sanders, all because of this. 
Boy, I tell you, this, there's number 78, Dirks, coming out and blocking two people before he ended up getting in the way of that last defender. But Sanders right here picks up another touchdown. All right, Foreman kicks it away to Gators. Gators on his four. 15, and this time he is stopped at about the 20. Thomas Homko, number 60, and on the stop. Walter Dink, number 40, check it. And take a look at the scoring drive. 16 plays, eating up nearly eight minutes on the clock. Byron Sanders capping it with the second touchdown of the night from 24 yards away. This certainly, without trying to slight Minnesota, is the best Northwestern performance of the season from everybody's standpoint. And you can see it on the scoreboard. Remember, they started in a 21 to nothing hole. Well, this is a great opportunity for Northwestern to really maintain this momentum and maybe put them into a punting situation and come back again because they've got them this they own this quarter they well, own the second now they own the third minnesota has darrell thompson and you never can see it anything he's going was done with thompson Last pass out to jason bruce and bruce gets close to the first down yardage dwight james on the stop along with thomas kyle palmer combining to stop jason bruce after a gain of 10 yards. You'll see here Terry Thomas. I don't know what he's thinking about. He's in a position to make the tackle. He's the corner for Northwestern. Look at him, he's sitting right there. All he's gotta do is settle down, break down. You're there, make the tackle. This is something Northwestern has not done all year. All right, first and 10, now for the 30. A little mix up, a busted play, and it will probably be a procedure call because the left side of the line moved a lot sooner than the right side of the line. Minnesota has picked up a lot of penalties tonight, too, and Northwestern relatively few. In giveaway and takeaways, for example, the Golden Gophers are plus six. And they've not been getting the breaks here tonight. They've not been consuming the clock, and that's why I'm sure this one's an important drive for the Gophers. First down, now 15. Thompson. Come on, DJ, and then right. Peterson, Mike Bauman on the stop along with Robinson. And Thompson gets about six of those back. From ground level, you just see the defensive line of Northwestern just maintaining their position and uh, putting them back uh, to us so now. Uh, a second and long situation, so Northwestern turning the tables here on the Gophers. Gate of six, second and nine. Ah! Fake shot, there's got some room here. And Scott Schachter with a good bootleg, tucking the ball on his hip. And Kyle Palmer knocking him out of bounds, but right near that first down marker. Well, I tell you, I think Schaffner did a nice job of just diving for the first down, but also offensively, I think Minnesota is starting to give the ball a little less to their number one guy, and here's the dive. Just gets into the first down because Northwestern, I believe, has got to be keen here in the third quarter on Darrell Tom Thompson. Well, everybody else has, you know. Uh, that's one of the problems Minnesota has had. They had a couple of good receivers, uh, specifically Chris Gators, but they've had problems getting the ball to him. Option play, Schaffner again, and he is upended beautifully by Dwight James right at the line of scrimmage. Dwight James coming up from that safety spot. Dwight James, good play. Yeah, Dwight James has had a lot of opportunities for tackles this year, as you can imagine, with giving up 550 yards in total offense a game. He is leading the Big Ten in tackles. Currently at this time, he has 56 tackles, averaging 14.4 tackles a game. If he's not sore on Sunday, my name's not that often. They gave me on that play, second and nine. Three receivers out. And the pass intended for Pat Singelhoff whose father, Mick, played a lot of football here for the Vikings of Minnesota. Overshot him. Good defense by Northwestern. Brings up a third and nine. Excellent defense for Morton by Northwestern. I think 
They actually, they actually knew what was going on. I think because of some film study and tendencies, they played that very well in the secondary. Gave Mink, uh, Tinklehoff no opportunity, no room at all to kick that ball. Important down for both clubs. Third down, nine balls on the 40. Thompson, Thompson taken down by Darrell Ashmore. What a play by the Wildcats. Boy, Ashmore really came up with a big play. Had a big game against Army. As you see, number 96 there with 10 tackles against Indiana. Comes back with just three, but makes the big play. Is this team fired up or what? Well, they've got every reason to be fired up. And that sophomore there at 6'7", 265 from Peoria comes up with the big tackle. Cut coming from the 28. And Buchanan. Wow. This ball out of bounds, and Richard Buchanan caught a break right there at about his own 16-yard line. After the punt by Brent Herbel. If you don't think these things are tough to uh, catch, you should stand down there during warm-ups and watch those things go up to the top of this balloon and then try to concentrate with guys breathing, breathing down your neck. But uh, Buchanan, a sophomore, I met his father, as a matter of fact, last Thursday. He works for a company in uh, Spirit Sales, and his father obviously is very proud of his son. Spirit Sales, huh? that's a nice, that's a euphemism. That's another liquor. word for liquor. <laughs> All right, we got the flags here. And coming across quickly is uh, Charles Collins off the defensive line. Just a special note of interest, Byron Sanders' brother, Barry, is the uh, tailback for Oklahoma State. He got four TDs today. He leads the nation in rushing. So, Byron, I don't know if he's aware of that, but uh, certainly Byron's off to a pretty good uh, game so far. Not a bad trip for both brothers tonight. I think he's got over 130 yards. Yep, he does. He's got 150 some odd yards and 49 carries. There he is, number 23. That's the best effort of the season. Here we are, a minute 59 to go, third quarter. First down, now five to go. Northwestern says Greg Fisher in motion. Sanders. Byron Sanders around the right side with Collins making the stop. And Sanders getting a gain of a couple. Well, maybe one. Second and four. Ball's on the 23. This is a luxury that Northwestern has not had all year long. They had it once at Army when they were up 7-3 at halftime. But Northwestern has really rallied back here and now can actually control the ball. And they controlled it much of the first half. Marcus Lang split out to the left. And stopped again back of the line of scrimmage by Collins. And Gary Isaacson is Sanders. So Minnesota's defense stiffening here. One of the ways you defense a good running back like Darrell Thompson is you don't give an opportunity to get on the field and run the football. And Northwestern now faced with an opportunity to, to maintain that, as you see, total yards so far in this quarter. Two receivers out to the left. Third and four. And once again, the quick hitter, and it will be short of the first down. Gary Isaacson coming up to stop Sanders again. And Northwestern has been held now by Minnesota for the first time in its last five possessions. Ed Sutter here can really help his ball club. Ed Sutter, if he can come up with a big kick here, and he's had a couple big ones this year, I think it would really help his club. Sutter will let it go from about his own 16. Didn't get it that time. But he's been known for rolls. This one, though, goes out of bounds. No, it's down by Walter Ding at the 46-yard line. As Eddie Sutter kicks it away, a 30-yard kick only. Well, let's see if the magic now of Daryl Thompson can cut back. Let's see if they can rub that lantern and get him into the secondary running free like he did in the first quarter. There's Francis Pay talking to Eddie Sutter, and there you see John Ivlo back in the civvies. Is it a knee or an ankle? Uh, it's an ankle. My new hero, my new freshman hero. 13 seconds to go here in the third quarter. We're looking at Ivlo. The officials take a timeout. 
Again, the chains have those kinks in them that they... I'm sorry, oh, the Wildcats yeah. are working on the links. Before you know that, that every time Northwestern has the football, it goes from 10 to 8 yards, and when they get it, goes to 11. You know the magical rings those guys use? Yeah, I'm sure, Ted, I'm sure. There we go. Listen, if you you make the road trip, there's nothing to do. You know, this is a good job description. Chris Gator splits out to the left. Minnesota will get one playoff here, at least in the third quarter. 13 seconds to go. And they go to Thompson. Thompson, again, bottled up by Dan Frevoletti and Dwight James. Knocked out of bounds with no clock still runs, and that will do it for the third quarter. James and Frevoletti on the stop. A gain of two yards. And that's the end of the third quarter. We'll come back with the final 15. Northwestern up 28-21. Watching Sports Vision, Northwestern Minnesota, the Wildcats lead 28-21 as we start the final quarter of play. Minnesota with the ball. Scott shot with a first quarterback. Gets it off to Thompson. Come on, Daryl! And Daryl Thompson, boy, was trapped back at the line of scrimmage, as was uh, Schaffner. But they turned that one into an eight-yard game. What an effort he made to try to make that first down right at around the uh, 30 for the 49-yard line. Just a terrific effort, but not enough as it comes into a short-yard situation. A broken play just about actually was trying to throw a quick screen to the right side. He just cuts it back across the grain, and here's that great effort. And the pros, that might have been in the grass, but here it went for an eight-yard gain throw. It's a third and one. Thompson this time looks to be well across the first down marker to the 42-yard line, and they'll move the chains. You know, in the, in the Big Ten, there is six Big Ten running backs that rank amongst the top 20 in the nation. And one of them is uh, Anthony Thompson, who we faced last week, who's averaging 158. And this guy here, who's off to a very good second half. Ball's on the 42, first and 10 Gophers. They give it to the short man. Gould getting close to first down yardage. And it is a first down. They'll move the chains again. One of the problems of, of, of the Gophers this year was trying to fill the void of two absentee guards at graduation and an offensive tackle. So even though San, uh, uh, Thompson's got the ability, he's still got to have, have some protection up front. First down for the 32. Minnesota on the march now after the short punt by Sutton. Homko says hello. Thomas Homko, the freshman. I was watching Homko on that play. A lot of times I just pick out one player, and I have to watch Homko. Watch him move down the line of scrimmage, square, 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 square. And he's going to make a cut back and watch this. Clinic tackle. That's what you love to see, is that guy just keeps square across the line of scrimmage, never overcommitting playing behind his defensive line and making just the perfect tackle for no game. 6'1", 224-pound freshman. They're liking to the gain some weight, but no complaints about that last play. Second down, no game. Schaffner got a man open. It's him, it's Bruce. Jason Bruce for a first down or near to it inside the 25. Nice catch by Bruce, just working on Thompson, Terry Thompson, number 47. And just a little rollout, and they're, they're just playing man-to-man uh, -man over there, and he just gave him way too much cushion. Not much you can say, I guess, but when you're running the football, as much as they have been, you've got to go once in a while and work on that cushion. Greg Otto, the tight end, who was victim of a pretty tough hit, is back in the game here, number 84. And this is Thompson with Andre Walker riding his back. Thompson gets it down near the 15-yard line, gain of five. Kyle Palmer from the safety position on a blitz, which really opens the middle of that defense. And you'll be lucky, uh, he's very lucky that he didn't break this all the way because there's no one. There's the blitz right there by Kyle Palmer. And luckily that the defensive line collapsed that or he would have been waltzing right into the end zone for six. 
Second and five. Ball's on the 15. Thompson again. First down in Minnesota. Thompson with all kinds of moves. Takes it inside the 10 to the six yard line. First and goal. He put a move on Jeff Robinson that I think uh, is going to make him see, see stars here. Watch him put a move on Robinson, right? Oh. Here. And then he just picks up uh, enough yardage to come up with another first down. Kyle Palmer saving the touchdown. A look at Jeff Robinson. Ball's on the seventh, first and goal. This time he gets inside the five. Dwight James and Andre Walker combined, along with Darrell Ashmore. You see a nice big hit from the field level. They're number 96, Ashmore. And here comes Trevor Lenny working down the line. Overruns it a bit. But they're uh, trying to get us done. I think it was Hopper on number 60 that came in to finish it off. Walker there out of Kansas City at 6'5", 270. He's got to play his heart out right now. Ball on the four-yard line, Mike. Now it's a second and goal. They park it on the three. Scott Schaffner splits the backfield. And now we'll take a time. Scott Schaffner takes a timeout. That's Minnesota's second. They may need them later on. We'll see, and we'll be back. Picture 11 03 to go, fourth quarter. Minnesota driving, second and goal on the three yard line. Shot there. Touchdown, Gophers. Scott Schaffner looked for somebody, couldn't find him, took it in himself. Minnesota now within one. Shane Strain, his tight end, was open just momentarily. The shot there couldn't get the ball to him. I don't know if he didn't see him or what, but he turned in a drastic play, a zero play, a loss into a, a six points. And this game was one point away from being tied up here in the third quarter. Well, Brent Berglund in the fourth quarter, I'm sorry. Brent Berglund will try to tie it up right here at 28. No doubt about it. 10 minutes, 57 seconds to go. And you see the sign from referee Jim Kimmerling. It is all tied up at 28 with Minnesota after taking about 35 minutes off. Coming through to tie this thing up again. Well, I really, I really didn't think you could keep a running back like Daryl Thompson down too long. Obviously a motivated Northwestern team, as you see. He's looking for his tight end here. Strain. For some reason did not see him, but he just cuts across the grain, and then he just ends up being a running back, smelling the end zone. He didn't have far to go. He was really only on the seven-yard line when he actually hit for the end zone. Well, 10 plays, 53 yards following the short Northwestern punt, and we have a tie ball game at 28. As you look at Scott Schaffner, the freshman quarterback, making his first start. He had split time earlier in the season with Alan Holt. Holt had waited around for years while he understudied Ricky Foggy. After Foggy graduated, Holt was given the job, but Schaffner put the pressure on him and now has it himself. Ten plays, 53 yards, a little over four minutes. And we have ourselves a new ball game here at the Metrodome. Mike Lederman along with the birthday boy, Ted Albrecht here. Ted celebrating his 23rd birthday for the 14th time. <laughs> And here comes the kick taken by the short man, Walter Ding. And Walter Ding across the 25 to the 27. Brought down by half the state of Minnesota. Led by number 57, Ben Williams. There he is. Happy birthday, Ted. 
See, I'm the only guy that actually wears my sport coat at all times, always wanting to be professional, always wanting to look like a true color man, not like some other people I know. That's true. I just want to show off my, my chest. That's what it is. Yeah. Meanwhile, Northwestern trying to show off its offense here. After leading, they find themselves back tied. Down to 10.51, Randy Rowe, the tight end, number nine. And here is Bob Christian. Christian getting a couple. Mike Sumble. 6'4", 250-pound sophomore from Brooklyn Center, Minnesota. Making the stop. There's Mike. Call it a gain of three, second and seven. Ball's on the 29-yard line. Following the Minnesota tying touchdown, Greg Bradshaw has been in there. All the way at quarterback. Bradshaw. Ooh, and Greg Bradshaw takes a shot from Max Stevens as well as Charles Collins, who's really made a difference since he's come into the game. And Bradshaw gets it to the 32-yard line. It's one thing you don't want to happen too often, I don't care at what level, is to having your quarterback run around in the open field, cutting up between defensive linemen and then taking a shot like that, right in the hit from number six. Russell Harris. Russell Harris putting the meat on that quarterback from Northwestern, Greg Bradshaw. Crowds into the action now, third and four for Northwestern. This is Buchanan coming towards you. Watch out. Bradshaw's in trouble. And the pressure put on by Joel Brown and Les O'Hara. And, and a small flag and right at the flag. line of scrimmage. Well, we'll check this out. But it was quite a defensive play by Minnesota. We'll hear what the penalty is. Joel Brown has been doing this all game long. He's been coming from that safety position right on the outside. The hold, excuse me, Ted, the hold against Northwestern and will be refused. And the Wildcats are going to have to punt again. From the left side, I'm sorry, Mike. He comes from the left side, gives Bradshaw Greg no opportunity to do anything except get down and take cover. Sometimes it's feast or famine, and that time it was definitely a plus for the defense. Well, Sutter will get it to Gators in single safety back on his own 38. Here comes the rush. Sutter gets this one out. About the 43, and Gators look out. They ran one back 79 yards a couple of weeks ago, and again, they have good field position inside Northwestern territory. Eddie Sutter, who had had a big foot, number three in the country in punting, has come up with a couple of shorties here. 37-yard punt, 13-yard return. And once again, Minnesota's in business to go ahead. Great guy was drafted by the Raiders in the first round, one of the only punters in the history of the NFL, because he could boom them, and that's one of the reasons why they were under field control position at all times, because he got them out of jams like that. And that's what you need, a punter who can make the big punt when needed. Well, they're hoping Eddie Sutter can do that. Let's not forget he's only a freshman, and he gets a lot of foot into it. But, of course, freshman and inconsistencies are synonyms. Minnesota with the ball. Thompson ripping through on the right side to the 41-yard line. Block now under nine minutes. Ashmore making a good play to come off his offensive guard, their number 96. Only had three tackles last week against Indianapolis. I'm sorry, uh, in, uh, University of Indiana. And of course, their big back, Anthony Thompson, had a big game last week against this defense. Now let's see if they can stop another big back. Second and seven. Thompson again, and Thompson twisting his way across the 40 to the 37. And guess who made the tackle again? Daryl Ashmore, number 96. Well, he started to come on against uh, Indiana last week, but certainly this is far and away the best game we've seen Darrell play. Got a lot of recognition as a freshman last year, but had a slow start this year along with the rest of that line. The rest of that defensive line has had its problems, especially in that middle. That's why Mike Baum was in there over the nose. He has made a difference. Baum in there, number 74, third and four. And this time... The Wildcats stop Octavius Gould. And it will bring up a fourth down and an interesting call for the Gophers and Coach John Gutekunst. 
Well, they made that decision. Yeah, they're going to send Herbal out. Yes, good decision. You don't want to fool around at midfield. Don't make the uh, first down, and then you give uh, the opponent the ball just around the 36-yard uh, line. It's not a good decision. All right, of course, remember, they did run a fake on this in the first quarter. This time, Herbal is going to hold it. And this one's headed right for the end zone. You know, Mike, you hear the crowd as the ball goes right into the end zone at Northwestern. Dodged a bit of a bullet there. Now, why do you think that they made the decision to punt it away? The reason is, is certainly they felt that the momentum has started to change a little bit, and they've started to stop this running attack of Northwestern. So why give them the opportunity to gain some momentum back? Just kick it out of the end zone. That's not too bad. Maybe you can punch it inside the 10. They really put their backs to the wall. Well, Northwestern now with first and 10 on its 20. Byron Sanders with 30 carries, 157 yards. Check it, 32 carries for 157 yards. As they go back to the wishbone. Northwestern started with this. Now they're back in it. Here's yeah! Sanders and Sanders stacked up by Collins, number 91. Number one, Andre Thetis. And Ron gets underneath that pile, the linebacker. You're right. Northwestern did start out with the wishbone, and they didn't have a lot of success with it. And they're doing a controlled wishbone, a power wishbone, where they're just giving the ball to the far back and then having the full back and the near back block inside. They're really not running it outside that much. As you see, some interesting graphics about the comparison between the two great backs here at the Dome. This time it's Christian on the pitch. Christian gets some good blocking, and Christian gets across the 30, a first down for the Wildcats. Six minutes, 27 to go. Les O'Hara coming up to make the stop. There's O'Hara. You know, he's got family watching this one back in Chicago. On Sports Vision, of course. Of course. The cable, the cable company that brings you more. Yes, indeed. Right down there in Oak Park. I know it's late. I know it's late. Clock running now. First down from the Northwestern 31. Christian on the ball. Christian gets nowhere. Gary Isaacson, the 6'4 freshman from Apple Valley, Minnesota, leading the charge. Northwestern's been trading off quite a bit between the two backs. That is Christian and Sanders. Christian now picking up uh, no gain on that play, but has nine carries for, I'm sorry, yes, he has uh, nine carries for 33 yards. And the touchdown off the pass reception. Sanders. And Sanders rolling forward. We got a flag thrown in the direction of Randy McClellan. Frank Jackson making the stop. But McClellan is stomping his foot, and that can only mean somebody's going to say something he's not going to like if they haven't already. Another clip on him. He had a clip earlier in the first quarter on a crack back, a crack back block. And that's a hold on that one. Well, Northwestern, which had stayed relatively penalty free this game gets one it cannot afford right now it'll set them back 10 bring up a second and 20 and more importantly set them closer to their own goal line at their own 21 going into this ball game northwestern had 29 penalties for 211 yards they ranked seventh in penalties in that department not a department you want to be high on the totem pole with sanders comes out richard buchanan comes in at a wide receiver spot this is the thing that Northwestern now uh, has had some problems with, is always being in that long situation. Now, now uh, it looks like they're going to be second and 20, to say the least. Rush over to Sanders. Sanders back in. Rush over to fullback to go back in the eye of Buchanan. Top to the left. There's Sanders again. And Sanders doesn't get much. Stopped by Sunbold and gets. <laughs> I wish everybody could see what we see. Francis Bay took his headset off, came halfway to the numbers, and was yelling at Buchanan to stop fighting with the receiver and get in the huddle and make a play. Who cares if you win the battle? We want to win the game. Look at him. He's got his hands on his hips. He wants to win this football game, and, and fooling around with uh, a cornerback is not going to do it. Uh, third down, 18 to go. They spread the field. Great drop. 
Bradshaw looking. Ooh, except it for Buchanan and incomplete. Good play by Andre Thaddeus on the coverage. And again, Andre Thaddeus did a nice job, and that's the job that he has to do. Make sure he doesn't catch the ball and knock him out of bounds. And I don't think that he would have stayed in bounds anyway, Mike, on that catch. Get another penalty against Northwestern, a hold declined by Minnesota. So once again, Eddie Sutter will be back there to punt. And Sutter has had a couple of problems his last two kicks, and they really need to move one out here. Chris Gators. Watch out for Gators. Dangerous man. He can prove that. He can take one of these low-line drives and run with it. Good snap. It's a high kick. Doesn't turn over, and Gators grabs it out of bounds, but it's inside the 40 to the Minnesota 38-yard line. 4.23 to go. The game is tied at 28. Minnesota with decent field position again. A 40-yard kick, no return. And the Gophers now would love to put one score on the board. Well, Knut, the head football coach for Minnesota, has uh, been around football for a long time. He was a defensive coordinator for 12 years prior to becoming the head football coach, and he knows both sides of the football, and he'd like to get another score here. Well, for the Wildcats, they must stiffen right here and hold on the Gophers. Scott Schottner has been it all the way. Nobody, nobody to throw to, but he's got some room to run. And Terry Thomas takes him down in front of the uh, Minnesota bench, along with Kyle Palmer. Good game, though, for Schaffner. You know, Mike, we're running out of time here. I think both these teams are running out of time. There's only 4.15 left to go in the game, and he's just trying to work the clock. And that if, if he can get it towards field goal range, they can win this football game. That is, the Gophers could win this football game with almost no time to go. Well, Berglund, their kicker, doesn't have great range, but he's three or four for the year. The only one he's missed was from 52 yards out. Second and four. Thompson. Thompson stopped by Thomas and Palmer. You're right. Palmer coming up in that safety position, playing almost like a linebacker, as you see Kyle Palmer. He'll see him from the end zone, number three come in and try to stop this play right there, number three. And they know that when you need a couple yards, you're going to give it to your best back, and that's his key. Jason Bruce comes in. Shane Strain comes out. Third down play, third and four from the Gophers, 42. They split the backs. Schaffner's got two receivers out. Schaffner stopped short of the first down. On a grab on, tackle in there. By John Broker, let's see the spot. And the spot looks to be first and 10, Minnesota. A good spot for the Gophers. Clutch play by Schaffner. Because both his receivers were covered. They were, they were covered, and he had no opportunity except to try to make no, something out of nothing. And if it wasn't for Broker making that arm tackle, he might have gone a little bit further than just 10 yards. First and 10. Just inside the 47 of Minnesota. Clock at 308. Complete and falling out of bounds. A nice catch. For Minnesota is Michael Baker. Baker just came into the game. A split end from St. Louis. 5'11 senior. You'll see him dance on the sidelines from the end zone. This is the kind of things you just like to fool around with. Oh, you got it in. Just play some catch. Just have some fun on a Friday when there's not a lot of pressure to practice. The day before the game, you just play little, little out patterns. Work the clock, 3:04. Play catch with your quarterback, and now it really counts. You come up with the big play. Only Baker's second catch of the season. Certainly a big one for the Gophers. Second down, less than one. Three play for Shockman. And he's way up short. Intended for Gators. Now they come back at third and one with under three minutes to go. If Schaffner was a, uh, a, a Ricky uh, Foggy, I think I'd be a little bit more concerned. 
That is, if I was a defensive coach for Northwestern. But because of his lack of experience, he's got an opportunity to make a mistake or two. I'd say he certainly has performed to a lot higher standards than freshmen normally do. Granted, he's a red shirt, but he's shown a lot of poise in there. He has third and one. Minnesota has converted many. And this time, he did not make it. Thompson didn't make it. Don't see any flags, but Northwestern really stacked them up. Thomas Hopko there. And what a play by the Wildcats defense to bring up the fourth down. Unrealistic for Northwestern, who's given up 56% of third down conversions. And the initial hit is made by Hanko, the middle linebacker, and now they've got some big decisions to make. Well, they're going to go for it. They're going. Fourth and one, 227 to go, clock running. And you can see Jeff Robinson, 21, Mike Baum, number 74, helping out Hanko on that stop. So here's your ball game for Northwestern right here, and certainly for Minnesota. I know who's going to get the ball. I think 45,000 people know who's going to get the ball. Let's see. And there goes the time clock. Oh. There goes the time clock. Ted, just what you were talking about, Schaffner being a freshman, makes a very important freshman mistake, letting the time clock, the 25-second clock, run out. John Gutekunst not asking him if he wants to run for president. Now watch the reaction of Gutekunst, the off the the, the head coach who's been who's been around, saying, "Please call timeout, freshman. Please call timeout. I've been coaching for 22 years, and I'm losing my hair, my mind." I'm well, like, Hey, you know he was a sociology of religion major in college, so he didn't say anything blue. And this guy loves it. <laughs> He's gone. Boy, I've got they got a freshman in there. He says, I've got enough of my own. Well, now, now this is where Gunakutz is gonna say, I'm gonna be, I'm not, it's done, it's over with. I gotta get the first down. Let's forget about it. He's not gonna show any more emotion. Mike Ditka would be pulling his hair out, would have the guy by the throat. But well, he's being poised. He's showing his uh, his experience in football. 2.07 to go, it'll be fourth and six. And you don't see Herbal. Wow. That was a big mistake. That was an awfully big mistake because now they've got to throw the football. Also a key point to make is that Minnesota has no timeouts. Northwestern all three, but Minnesota has none. So here we go. It'll be uh, fourth down. Ball's on the 49. Well, just resting over midfield. Fourth and six. This is a, a bigger play for the Northwestern program than it is for Minnesota's program. That is for sure, Ted. Well said. It is the play of the season for Northwestern right here. We'll have excellent field position on the Minnesota 42. Can you believe it? Look at, there he is. He's had a great game. Daryl Asmore, number 96. He's been working on J.J. Lennon and also Chris Thome. And he's had a well of a game. And Francis Pay has got to be thrilled. Trying to quench his thirst. There's the defensive coordinator right next to him. Uh, Bill McConnell. McConnell. Yeah. And he says, there. Yeah. Well, Francis has always been a cool the... customer, but boy, he certainly <laughs> let it all hang out right there. Plus territory. Yeah. Let's see the fifth-year senior, see what he can do. Well, the ball's on the 43-yard line of Minnesota. Two minutes, one second to go in the game. We are tied at 28. Bradshaw at the controls with all three timeouts left. Guess what? We got problems with the chain. <laughs> oh, I'm uh, telling you. Uh, there's the much maligned Northwestern defensive line, or three-fifths of it. Mike Loud there, who's seen some action today. The sophomore, there's Andre Walker. They gave game balls out. Yeah, he should get the entire enough. inventory right, right there. They wouldn't have enough in the locker room. All right, Northwestern 43 yards away now. They've got two minutes to do it or get close. Lyra Adler. Wentz. Give this to Christian, and Christian... Gets a yard, maybe two. Gary Isaacson on the stop. Clock now at 153 and counting. 
wonder about that call right off the bat. Ah. I want to try not to second guess any play calling from up here. For sure. But you know, Byron Sanders had carried a heap of times. 136 with 44 yards to go. Uh, All you need is a out. field goal. Yeah, you need at least 15 yards to get one. Yes. Second down. Bradshaw gives it to Christian. And Christian for no game. Great stop by Isaacson again. A minute 19, 18. I wonder why they haven't called a timeout yet. Well, they have three and they're not going to use Here it. Here it is. Now he's going to call it. He waited long enough. Francis Pay, I, I think, should have maybe uh, called that a little bit sooner. Well, we don't second guess up here, of course, Ted, but there's a minute seven to go. Northwestern has used the timeout. Still has one to go in this 28-28 tie. True Value Hardware Stores know that discriminating cooks rely on quality Miro cookware. Cook light and clean easy with the Miro nonstick saute set. Get both the 10 and 12 inch pans for just $14.88. Then prepare meats to perfection with the Miro aluminum roaster with cover and rack. It's just $19.97. And protect nonstick cookware from scratching with Great Cook's new coated metal kitchen tool. They're just 99 cents each at participating True Value Hardware Stores and Home Centers. Francis Pay looking at the fourth down play where the Gophers were going for the first down and didn't get it when Darrell Ashmore made the stop behind the line. Meanwhile, Northwestern has got itself going backwards here. Well, what I don't understand is that they need at least 15 yards here. In the first play, they blitzed. They blitzed. Uh, Minnesota came right in and stuffed the run, and now they've got to pick up. That is, Northwest has got to pick up at least 10 yards. Well, it's third and 11 from the 44-yard line. You can see the clock. That's Buchanan coming towards you. Bradshaw complete. Complete to Buchanan. And it'll be shy, first. though. It'll be shy of the first down. Well, we'll see. We'll wait for the nope, spot. Give no, it to him. What a spot. Northwestern. Richard Buchanan has been an outstanding receiver all season for Northwestern. He just showed it right there. They ran a, I'm sorry, Mike. They ran a nice option play there where he gets the option to run or pass. Two blocks at the point of attack, freeing that pass up. All right, the ball's on the 33. Under a minute to go. This is Christian now. Christian to the 30, stopped by Isaacson. Northwestern with two timeouts. Clock moving with 45 seconds to go. Now they've got two kickers, Ira Adler, who is more accurate but doesn't have the leg, and Craig Foreman, whose range is close to 50 yards and is used for the long attempts. Right now the field goal would be about a 48-yarder, so they still need some territory here with the clock 27. Christian to the 25. Now they'll take a timeout. 19 seconds to go, 18. They're still letting it run. Now they stop it. Well, while we have the moment, let me not forget the fine job our spotters and statisticians have done tonight. Gary Wilcox, Rick Benson, and of course, the low-key Don McLaughlin. Fellas, again, our thanks. And there they are, sort of working their brains out here in the booth. My good friend right here, the most complete stat man I ever saw. It's bigger right. than William Perry, but uh, I well, don't argue with him. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this one. Northwestern 28, Minnesota 28. Wildcats ball on the Minnesota 25-yard line. 17 seconds to go. What do you think, Ted? One play and a field goal? Well, I think they got. I think they've got uh, an opportunity to run one more play. How many timeouts do they have? Well, they've got two, See, but they also have third one down. One timeout left. One left. They're running the clock down very nicely because they're going to give uh, no opportunity for Minnesota to come back. You can see Ira Adley there. This is his range now. He's only had two chances this season. Mike, I went down uh, with about, uh, I'd say, an hour and 15 minutes before kickoff and had 
an opportunity to watch, to watch both field goal kickers. Ira pulled a few from the left hash, but hit all of them from the right hash. Right now, he's sitting on the right hash. That is the professional right hash, not the collegiate right hash. So he's more towards midfield. So if they can move that, I'm sure they're going to run it off the left end, off the left side, to get it more towards right towards center, as they did the play before this. Well, you're still looking at a 42-yard field goal, but again, you're indoors, no wind, no turf problems. 17 seconds to go on third down. And up the middle for the first down, and they'll take their final time out here. Is Christian stopped by Ron Getz. So it has come to this. First down. First down. Now here's the, the reason. Yard line. And here's the reason that why they know that oh they call timeout to move the chains. Now he's gonna call time. He's standing right in front of the official. You'll see him there. Great Bradshaw. He's gonna let it go to about three seconds and call time. Okay, and that's what he is doing. Well. And the finger goes pointed from Francis Pay to Ira Adler. And Ira Adler becomes Ira on the spot. Five foot eight inch junior from Plantation, Florida, who has done well. Let's talk about the job description of kickers. Yeah. It's a real, real tough one. They don't last very long in the NFL if they don't kick, if they don't make kicks like this. Because this is where you, you the easiest job in football, if you ask me, is a punter. Okay, okay. No, no I'm serious. A so punter, if it's so easy, why do they keep no, changing? No, a punter is the easiest job in football. You don't have to hit anybody, you just have to hit the ball. But this, this is the toughest job in football because you've got to kick them when they count. And if you don't kick them when they count, you don't last. Well, He's, Ira Adler has not missed from inside 40 yards in his Northwestern history. And he's at 39. Well, here we go. You can bring a towel out. You can bring a blanket out. Bradshaw will hold. Here's your ball game. Three seconds to go. 39 yards away. penetration right over the top gosh almighty no one even they forgot to block you can't win a football game if you don't block even on special teams wow it was just the gates were wide open so it ends at 28 we'll be back